Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. This podcast is the full show from today's episode of Undisputed from start to finish. We've got a busy slate, so skip Shannon. Let's get to it. Welcome to Undisputed. We are live from Los Angeles. I'm Jenny Taft with Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. There are some happy LA fans today. Yeah. What are you guys doing? Yeah, that's what we do. We city it. We, 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 we. You're an LA yeah, guy yeah, now? We. Huh. I do want to say congratulations to the Los Angeles Dodgers for conquering such a hard road to the championship as opposed to LeBron's Lakers who cakewalked to their championship. Hard way, easy way. Way to go, Dodgers. We were the best team all year. Oh, were you? We were the best team all year. I think the other team in the basement at Staples Center deserved a shot. I can't even believe you said it with straight face. I did. How are we already bringing up the Lakers in this one? Skip, can we let the Dodgers have their moment? They fought. Finally brought an end to the World Series drought last night, winning it all for the first time since 1988. With race starter Blake Snell looking unhittable, manager Kevin Cash made a controversial decision to pull him in the sixth inning, which led to a Dodgers rally off the race bullpen, and the Dodgers went on to a 3-1 victory. There was a twist in the game, though, when Justin Turner was pulled in the eighth due to a positive COVID test when he returned to the field for the team photo after the game. Some questioned that was the right move. So, Shannon, should the Dodgers have allowed Turner to return for that team photo? They should have taken it out. The MLB should have taken it out of the Dodgers' hands because you know the Dodgers were going to allow him to be in that photo skip. He had been there. I think I think he's a seven-year vet with the Dodgers. He's a, he's a clubhouse favorite. He's a fan favorite. So they were not going to do the right thing. MLB should have done the right thing. MLB, you didn't come this far just to come this far. Mm. Skip, they've canceled games. They've isolated players. And you're supposed to isolate. Turner was wrong. The Dodgers were wrong. MLB were wrong for allowing him to do that. You, some things, Skip, this is why you have a commissioner. Because the teams will not do the right thing. And you have to have a higher authority to do the right thing, Skip. I know it would be hard. You're talking to a guy that was very fortunate, Skip. I won three Super Bowls. You did. And I was you, able... You went three for three. Three for three, Skip. As opposed to Justin Turner, who went <laughs> one for three. One for three, yeah. Skip. And especially the heartache. They lost mm-hmm. to the Astros in a game uh, seven. If I'm not mistaken, they the lost Red to the... They lost also to the uh, Nationals mm-hmm. just yep. last year. Yep. So, so it's hard. I get it, Skip. Yep. But the right thing yep. is the right thing under all circumstances. Yep. Because you're putting people at risk. If I'm not mistaken, the, the, the manager, Roberts, is a cancer survivor. He just survived cancer a year or two ago, uh, uh, lymphoma. Yep. And you, he's, <clears throat> he's there without even a mask on. If that was the case, get why just, did Justin Turner, Justin Turner, Turner was? Everybody, right. Skip, if that if if it was not that big of a deal, <laughs> why the hell did MLB remove him from the dugout at the mm. what the seventh inning? Why would they remove him? Why did they do that if it was not a big issue? Only to allow him yep. to come back without a mask and take a picture for the team photo without a mask. If it's not that big of a deal, why go through the lens that they went through to do it? Dodgers, you're wrong. Mm. I get it, Skip. I get it. You want to celebrate, Skip. You, you, this is your lifetime. You play a particular sport. Yeah. Obviously, you grew up in a lifetime thinking about what it would be like to play in the World Series, maybe strike <laughs> somebody out, catch the ball, hit a home run. I get yep. all that. But, Skip, you can't do it in this situation. Do they not? I understand they've been in the bubble. Think about it, Skip. You play in the World Series, and neither t- and where you're playing, you're not, that's not where you're from. That game should have been played right here in Dodger Stadium. Yep. Or And the game should have been played in Tampa, but that's not what they did. The ba- baseball put it in a bubble. Say, we want to minimize. It was a soft, soft bubble. bubble. We'll yep. skip, uh, so we want to try and minimize the actual And baseball was doing good. They'd gone 57 days without a positive test. That's pretty great. Only to have it do that. Only, Skip. Think about it. You get all the way, and you're like two, you're two steps from the finish line, and then you you, you collapse. Mm. That's what baseball did. Baseball, you can't have this. Everything was so great, and you allowed this to happen. Justin Turner, I get it, bro. As, as, as painful as those losses were to the Astros that cheated you out of this, and the Nationals that beat you fair and square, and to have now we got our moment, but bro, you can't put people at risk. 
and baseball removed you for that reason, and then the Dodgers allowed this to happen. Man, if I'm Rob Manfred, I'm coming down with a fine so steep. Oh, yeah, they're going to have to pay for this. This yep. is a $10, 20000000 million fine right here, Skip. You can't do it. You just can't do it. I hear you. But allow me to say, if you step back from this, in this year of 2020 that we have all suffered through, didn't it almost have to end this way? <laughs> yeah, we get right. all the way to the finish line, and all of a sudden, what? Yes. First, they're, they're wondering on the telecast, uh, we're not sure what happened to Justin Turner. He got injured, we think, but we're not sure how right. because he just suddenly disappeared. disappeared. Going into the eighth inning, mm -hmm. then on our post-game show on Fox, Kevin Burkhart announced uh, he tested positive. Right. What? He did? It just had to end this way. But to your point, I had mixed emotions last night when I saw him on the field post-game. He is the leader of this team mm -hmm. and has been for a good long while. Correct. He grew up in Long Beach, California, which is just south of where we are right now, just right. south of LAX, the airport here. A huge Dodger fan. Yes. He's paid a lot of dues for this organization, for this franchise. And to your point, he is a huge fan favorite. Mm -hmm. He's almost 36 years of age. He's going to be a free agent. A lot of speculation that he won't be with the Dodgers going forward. Right. So I was torn because I wanted him to have his moment. And I'm assuming MLB left it in the Dodgers' hands. It, it'd go all the way to the top, to the owner, to the GM. Yeah. You know, somebody's going to have to say no because he's going to say yes because you knew his teammates would say absolutely yes. Right. Unfortunately, out on the field at that point were wives and girlfriends and children yes. and friends. And it's just, it's a wide open celebration. And what have we learned in the last four or five months about big celebrations with no masks? Those that, are called super spreaders. Super spreaders. This was the classic super spreading situation. Mm -hmm. And I sure hope this morning that they don't have a big outbreak because it could lead to a tragedy, as you well know. We've, we've learned all too much, and we still don't know enough about this virus. And what have we seen over the last two weeks, Skip? We're going to pre from what it was. We're getting 70, 75,000 new infections a day. Hospitalizations are going up. The death toll is rising. Yeah. So in the end, I'm obviously with you. Somebody needed to say no. Somebody upstairs in the Dodger organization, or to your point, Rob Manfred, who had been on the field for the yeah, presentation. He was, he was there for a while. Then this kept on and on as they took the team picture. And to your point, he took his mask off for the team picture because he didn't want to have this for posterity with this weird mask on, right? You just can't do it. And... I'm very sorry for everybody involved that he did it. I'm going to knock on wood for everybody involved that they don't have a huge outbreak that will lead to a, a real, a, a real tragedy. tragedy. Yes. And yet, in the end, in a weird way, the manager of the Tampa Bay Rays last night, Kevin Cash, in the sixth inning, made an inconceivable decision that actually helped take baseball off the hook for what could have happened. Yes. Because if he doesn't yank his starter, Blake Snell, who is just dominating at that point. He was, a bit, he was electric, I told you. Just overwhelming the Dodgers. If he doesn't run out of the dugout waving his right hand, saying that's enough after he allowed a one-out single that wasn't hard hit, so no. he allowed two hits, neither of them hard hit balls. If that doesn't happen, and the Dodgers don't come right back and seize the lead, and then with Mookie Betts, Homer later made it 3-1, to one, and that was the final score. If that doesn't happen, if Blake Snell is allowed, dare I say, to actually have a complete game shutout, which it felt like was happening, yes. poor MLB, and we're all just making it up on the fly here, now what do they do? How, how would they approach to Game 7? I have no idea. I don't either. Do you, do you wait two days or three days, or what do you wait? We kept seeing these postponements earlier in the year, Cardinals, we, Marlins. And guess what, Skip? We don't have to worry about contract tracing. We know everybody uh, that's on the Dodgers organization and players were in close contact with Turner. All too close. <laughs> so what do you do with Game 7? It would have been right here on Fox. Man. I, I, was, I told you my man Walker Bueller from Vanderbilt was positioned to maybe even be the World Series MVP, but... 
win. A week from now, <laughs> exactly. I, I don't know. So back to the decision, and before I launch on this, you, you go on it. I want to hear what you think about just how, how wrongheaded this was. Skip, when he pulled him, I texted Steve, my research, mm -hmm. and helped me with my stuff, produce on my end. I said, that was the wrong decision. I said, it's going to come back and bite him. I said, because this guy was dealing. And now when they take him out, there he's about to face the top of the order. Now, they had seen him twice and had no one even come close to hitting him. All three had struck out struck twice. Out. Harris, twice. Skip. He was six and zero with strikeouts. As great as Mookie Betts is, you can make the case he, he's the best player in the National League. He's one of the two best players, he and Mike Trout in all of baseball. Mm -hmm. Against lefty, he had the worst looking percentage in the National League. You took this guy out. Skip, he's your ace. I'm riding him. He's only thrown 73 pitches at that point. Yep. 48 of them have been striked. Whew. He's going 90 pitches. And see, this is where analytics are starting to ruin baseball because the analytics says the third time through, they, uh, uh, hitters have a better chance against the pitch. Well, you're going to have to show me. Yep. Prove, make me out of a liar. And this is the same thing happened in football, Skip. Remember, this is Seattle all over again. Because in the regular season, Beast Mode had been stopped on the goal-to-go -go situation five times. But you didn't look at what you had saw in the game. He was running wild. And that's the same thing that Kevin Cash. Kevin, just watch the game. I understand what you had done in the regular season. I understand what you had done in, 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 in the earlier rounds. But not in this moment. I'm getting to a game seven. Yep. He's going to get me to a game seven. Skip, that's my horse. The guy's a Cy Young winner. He 20, was throwing, 2018. Yep. Skip, he's throwing 97, 98 high. Yep. He's painting corners. He's painting a masterpiece at the plate. And you remove him for what? For the guy that you placed him with, he had given up a run in six consecutive postseason games. Mm. You do that? Mm. He could, Skip, it's the biggest managerial mistake in World Series history. Now, I, I only go back until... I can remember 77. When I, that's why, as far as I go back, Skip. But it's hard pressed for me to believe maybe something happened in, in 1903 or 1908, 27, 39. Maybe it happened then. But from what I can remember, that was the biggest bonehead mistake that a manager has made in World Series history. Skip, mm. you can't do that. This kid, Skip, he's, th he's throwing 97, 98. Skip, if he had, his velocity had dropped down, he's low 90s, high 80s. I get it. But not at this moment. The game is too big. We're getting, I believe Blake Snell gets them to a game seven. Because you see what happened? As soon as they got it by, they like, ooh, yes. Mookie Beth, uh, uh, Dave Roberts said Mookie Beth looked at him and smiled. And what did he do? I tagged the double. All the Dodgers said they were ecstatic. Said I could, he said, I couldn't believe it. He's yeah. like, oh, they taking him out? They were so relieved. Yes. And Mookie greeted, um, Nick Anderson, who came in, who hadn't allowed a run in his last six appearances, but still, is he Blake Snell? Last? No. Skip, the and guy, Mookie greeted him with a rocket down into the left field corner. The guy had faced 18 yep. batters. Yep. He had struck out nine. Mm -hmm. He struck out nine through four innings, and nobody has done that in a World Series game Koufax. since the greatest Dodger pitcher ever, Sandy Koufax, in 1963. That's how long ago that was. And you removed him. Okay, so to your point, allow me to say this, and I know we have a lot of young viewers out there, but trust me on this, the greatest postseason pitcher I ever saw was named Bob Gibson. Yes. And he recently left right. this earth, mm -hmm. the, the late, great Bob Gibson. Mm -hmm. He was my favorite player growing up, my favorite mm -hmm. baseball player. I loved Ali, but I love Bob Gibson mm -hmm. maybe more because I love the St. Louis Cardinals. And Bob Gibson in the World Series pitched three games in three World Series, and, and all but one was a complete game. Mm -hmm. in, in the Yankees in, in 64, he had one eight-inning game. Right. Okay? So he pitched eight out of nine games. He finished the game. Yes. And he dominated the Red Sox in 67, and he dominated the Tigers in 68 until Mickey Lolich oh, outdueled him in the seventh yeah. game at Detroit. Right. But he beat the Yankees in 64. He would just finish the game. You know why he would? because he was the best player on the field and you just knew it. Mm -hmm. He had the most guts, he had the most fire, he was the most competitive, nasty pitcher I ever saw. And they just said, he's our horse, we're just gonna ride him home. Right. There are no analytics because he's just better than they are. Right. Last night, Blake Snell was clearly the best player on the field as a pitcher, the, right? Both teams. Both teams, it was like not even close. Right. 
He is owning you. You, you have no chance. You, you, you are hopeless, hapless. Either you're swinging and missing or making poor contact. Correct. And even the two singles were poorly struck mm -hmm. to me. Right. So what evidence did you, that, do you have that he was hitting the wall or running out of gas? None. This brings me back to Kevin Cash, who was not money last night. And I immediately tweeted. I know you texted, but I tweeted immediately, bad idea. Kevin Cash was not money last night. Mm -mm, you can't do that. Kevin Cash, to me, has become a media lightning rod through these playoffs. He's a great interview. I think he got a little full of himself, and he started to think, I'm actually the, the, the face of my team. They want to talk to me more than they want to talk to anybody else because we're, we're not that big a star. We, we got Blake Snell, right. and we got a Rosarena, but, but he's sort of come from nowhere. Right. So the star of the team became Kevin Cash. Yes. The one everybody wanted to talk to was Kevin Cash because he's a great interview. But you start to get full of yourself, right. and you start thinking, I'm the genius behind this because I know analytics. And didn't, and didn't he, <clears throat> one time, Skip, didn't he start nine left-handed batters? Mm -hmm. He's that guy. He, he's full of himself. So this time, he didn't trot out to have a conversation with Blake Snell after allowing a one-out single to center field. He runs out of the dugout with the cameras on him doing this. Give me the right-hander. And then camera goes to Blake Snell, who utters an expletive because he knew skip not I, again can, you can't, can't do that i don't skip i don't, don't do know. it to that man i don't know if i'd have came my skip yeah i think hey co hey let's have a car let's yep. talk let's talk at least i agree with you kevin cash should have gone to the mound son how you feel yeah how we doing out yes here? yeah we're okay everybody okay i ain't coming out come on to to me it felt like you could have left him in for nine innings, and I'm not sure they could have. They might have nicked him for a run somewhere, yeah. but I believe you could have won the game because as soon as he left, before I could reach for the keyboard again, it was two to one Dodgers. Yes. And it looked like the life and the spirit went out of the Rays. It did. Just look, they, they just looked shell shocked and dead in the water. Did you hear him after the game? Yep. They say, I thought he was doing well. I thought he was good. Hey. Well, they, they said, we saw Cy Young, Blake said. Yeah. yeah. Hey, well, somebody said that. Uh, I forget who it was, Skip. Said that's the best I've seen him. Kiermaier, Kevin Kiermaier. Yes. He's dealing. He Skip, he, dealing. he looked like big unit on the mound last Ooh. night. I mean, he's 97 up, 97, 98. At, at, painting at, the effortlessly. Yes. John Smoltz was great breaking him down because it's just like, it, did you see him sweating profusely like Clayton Kershaw no. does? No. Skip, he, he threw a, a breaking ball or a slider to uh, Seager. Seager swung and hit and took a knee. Yep. That's how bad he had him fooled. I agree. I do have one quibble with you, though. I was there in 2003, game six at Anaheim, uh, Dusty Baker. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. I, I'm sorry, just because that sticks in my personal craw because I was such a Barry Bonds fan. Yes. Barry Bonds was about to get sized up for a ring. And it's the, what was it? I wrote it down this morning. It's uh, game, it's the seventh inning. Maybe. They're up five right. to nothing with Russ Ortiz just cruising. And I'm not saying he was Blake Snell because right. he wasn't. Yes. But he had Anaheim in his back pocket, yep. the Angels. And I remember Dusty went out and said, mm, let me have the ball. And... You know the rest yeah. of the story. Yep. They roar back, back to win six to five, and that forced a game seven, which they won fairly handily. Right. And Barry Bonds remains ringless. Yes, you're right. Thanks and, to that. Decision. And Barry Bonds and uh, uh, the guy uh, uh, Azarena, what's what's his name? The uh, the uh, the, uh, the outfielder for the Tampa. Uh, Randy. Oh, uh, uh, Rosarena. Uh -huh. Now he had a phenomenal, but what Barry was doing, Skill. Oh. Oh. They throw in one pitch, it's out of the park. Oh. They just got to the point, they said, nah, we done. Yeah. <laughs> just take first. I told you, I've never seen a hitter who actually had the advantage over every pitcher he faced, because that's never happened. Right. That man did that year. Skip, I sure. still, I'm watching it. I was like, and, I, and I, I, I'm thinking to myself, I said, I told Skip, this kid here, this kid got stuff. Mm -hmm. This kid, high 90s and painting the corners and slide and change up. And I was like, they got no chance against him. Mm -hmm. And then he got the soft hit and it's, Maybe, maybe, Skip, it was because the guy that hit him, that's the ninth guy. He in the ninth slot. And so you're like, you just gave a hit to him, and you've been dealing with Seager, and you do, you know, all these other guys. Yeah, man, no, 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 no. Yeah. Mm -mm. He had owned Mookie. He had owned, he had owned everybody. He had. And by the way, speaking of Mookie, this is just me because I'm a big Mookie fan. I know Seager had the stats, had the numbers, but, but I thought Mookie was the MVP. 
He made all the big little plays. Well, he definitely should have got the one in the uh, uh, NLCS yeah. with those those home run robbing and those defensive hey. plays that he made. Well, he made them in the World Series, too. And then that home run he hit, that was pretty big because yeah. that just sank them. That, that was the end of them. And, Skip, the play that he made, the uh, ball hit sharply the first, uh, and he beat it to home uh, plate. It's just... It's just know-how, it's savvy, it's instincts. He was off at the crack of the bat, and he beat it easily. He, be, he, he did. He, he, could, he, he probably could have stood up and, be, and beat the play. Skip, I don't know what y'all got in return for him, Boston, yep. but I think y'all lost that trade. Just signed him. Yeah. <laughs> so, in the end, last quick thought. I'm happy for Clayton Kershaw because yes. it feels like he's off the hot seat, at yes. least for a little while. Yes. He's had a lot of struggles in the postseason, but he did come up big in this World Series. Yes. And I was happy for that team. It seems like a team full of good guys. Well, Skip, when you look at it now, you talk about a guy that has three side young, he yep. has an NL MVP, and yep. he has a World Series ring. Woo. That's a pretty impressive pretty resume. Impressive, I do agree. But, I, but Blake Snell's got to finish this. Yep. Skip, that was a Randy. You remember Randy Johnson? And that was against, if I'm not mistaken, that was against the Yankees. He pitched two games and then he came he in and got the save. He did. I'm I, Blake I, Snell. I was there. I'm riding. Yep. I'm riding. Yep. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I don't care what they. I don't care what analytics say. And if somebody would have came and handed me an analytics sheet, I would elbow him in the chest. Back up. You well, see this man dealing? If they had ridden him, I don't know how we'd have a game seven. But that's a whole nother issue. Skip. Fortunately, we don't have to deal with that. I ride him, and if they yep. hit him. I can live with that. Got it. I can't live with the decision I just made. Mm. Well, you mentioned Clayton Kershaw. You know, I was tweeted a congrats to Kershaw, LeBron James. Oh, that, that was everywhere. Oh, now he's going to glom on to the Dodgers. On his do name. LeBron was happy about the Lakers and, and, and the Dodgers. It's a big deal the for, for LA. No and mercy. Jerry Jones has admitted his frustrations with how the season has played out for the 2-5 and five Cowboys. During his radio interview yesterday, he was asked if there was a leadership void on the team with Dak Prescott and several starting offensive linemen out. And Jerry snapped back, telling the host to shut up and that in his eyes, no such void existed. Jerry did later apologize for getting chippy during the interview. So, Shannon, how much do the Cowboys miss Dak's leadership? Uh, it's really unquantifiable. Um, I think the thing is the mistake that Jerry was making, Skip, all he was looking at was Dak production on the field. And these issues never arose because Dak was always there. And so now he's getting an opportunity to see some, like you said, Skip, <clears throat> Tom Brady's value. Yeah, we know he's a transcendent historical quarterback, but it's the locker room things that never got to Coach Bill Belichick's desk, that his value was equally as important to what he was doing on the field. Now, I'm not saying Dak Prescott is or will ever be Tom Brady, but the way he was handling that locker room, the leadership that he was displaying in that locker room, you get to see firsthand what his absence means. You see, Jerry doesn't like the question of leadership because, Skip, Who's the question? In Jerry mind, who's the unquestioned leader of the Dallas Cowboys? Him. Not even close. It's him. Yeah, I agree. So he got upset <laughs> that the guys said, there, no, it ain't no leadership problem because I'm still in charge. I'm still here. Mm -hmm. So that's what Jerry took offense to. How dare you say someone else is, is a bigger and better leader of the Dallas Cowboys than me? Well, actually, live, Jerry. An owner can't ever be a leader. You know why, Jerry? Not to the, <clears throat> the extent that you're thinking, because he's not in the locker room every day. There are things going on in that locker room you have no idea what's going on, Jerry. But Dak would, because Dak would be in there. And they would feel comfortable enough. Some things, they don't feel... Now, they'll go run upstairs and tell you something that Mike McCarthy or Mike Nolan's doing. Mm -hmm. But there are other things that they're only going to share with someone that they feel is on an equal plane with them. That's a player. So, yes, they absolutely miss Dak. And his value, Skip, did you know Dak reached the $40 million plateau bar and, and been out for the last four, five weeks? Dak's value is actually increasing. It's like with them old cars, Skip. You remember you had an old car back in the 60s, 70s? You never knew it would be as valuable in, in, in 2000 or the 2020s as it was like, man, I don't know a piece of thing. Dak Prescott ain't playing a game, and, De and, and Jerry Jones is starting to realize that his value, although he's not playing, is increasing because he brings more than play. It's leadership, mm. and it's, it's greatly missed. 
in that locker room. And Jerry is finding out that, that out the hard way. Mm. Skip, they traded one of your Pro Bowlers yesterday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what does that mean? I'm just saying, it just goes to show you. So, I mean, I mean you the worst defense in football, and you trading some of your best players? Mm. Are they tanking? Are y'all start? What, what, what have I told you the last two days? No, you know what, Skip? Everson Griffin is really not a cowboy. He signed with the Cowboys, and when they start trading players that they drafted, mm -hmm. then that's going to show me something. I mean, but guys, I mean, Skip, is Don Terry Poe even playing anymore? I very seldom see him on the field, Skip. Mm. And so, yes, there's the leadership boy. Jerry took exception yep. to the interviewer asking him about leadership yep. because that's an indictment on him. Mm. And how dare you question my leadership? Okay. Very quickly, I'm going to address the Everson Griffin trade, uh -huh. which did not surprise me. It startled me, but it didn't surprise me when I sat back because I've told you for two straight days on this show. I believe that Jerry Jones is secretly sitting back and folding his arms and playing for Trevor Lawrence. I believe it. And you say, well, how are they going to outlose the Jets? <laughs> I don't think my team, the Dallas Cowboys, are capable of winning another game this year. So they're going to finish 2-14. and 14. Can that outlose the Jets well, who, who haven't lost on won a game yet? Right. Well, Co Coach Belichick might say, hold my beer. Okay. He might be trying to outlose. <laughs> okay, maybe. Okay, so that's Everson Griffin, yeah. who, by the way, made the Pro Bowl last year in Minnesota. Maybe it was on reputation. But Detroit snatched him up because against Detroit in that division, when he was a Viking, he was really good. 19 games against Detroit, he had 16 sacks. Yeah. Okay, so he played at a pretty high level. They need a pass rusher, and they said, thank you very much. Yeah. We will take him. Yeah, they gave the man away for a six, a six round. Six Conditional round six round. That means he's probably got to play. He's yes! got to produce. He's got to have X sacks yes! to get a six, or you're stuck with a seventh round pick. Are you just saying no mas? Are you done for the year, maybe? I don't know what they say. Are you unloading, <laughs> right? Okay, now back to Dak Prescott. I wish I could agree with you because I love Dak Prescott, and I do think he's a natural-born leader. I don't want to disrespect or diminish his ability to lead this team, but you said it. You, you answered your own question within the question. The way this, this whole franchise is rigged or geared, <laughs> it's all about the owner-general manager, Gerald Wayne Jones Jr. I'm sorry, period, end of story. He leads because he rules. Everything starts and finishes with Jerry. And it's so weird to me because Cowboy Nation just waits with bated breath for his Tuesday morning radio show, <laughs> The State of the Union, right. from Jerry Jones. This is insanity, yeah. right? Yep. Because every week we just wait. What are you going to do now, Jerry? Nothing. I believe in Mike McCarthy. I've got my man in Mike McCarthy. And isn't it sad that you have your man in Mike McCarthy? Because you chose him that, because he had the strength of being able to lose and stand tall. It's not about him winning games. Jerry was raving about his ability to stand tall under adversity. Skip. Really? So that's why you hired the guy? Because he can take it on the chin? Skip, can you tell me the adversity really? he endured having Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers? Well, they did at the end because he yeah. fell apart with Aaron and they had some rough times. When Aaron right? got, think about yeah. it, when Aaron got hurt. Mm -hmm. Now, if he, when Aaron gets hurt, if he can keep them yep. as, as a pretty good team like Kyle Shanahan yep. does. Okay. Okay, I can see that. But his team fell apart when, the guy, when Aaron Rodgers got hurt. Okay, so you're suggesting that all of a sudden Dak has gone into the $40 million range just in his absence. Okay, help me out. I, I want to take you back quickly through what's happened at various points of Dak's career, mm -hmm. he lost Zeke, remember, in 2017? Yes. And they went to Atlanta. The yes. first game was at Atlanta. And do you remember what happened? Yep. They did not have Tyron Smith yep. for that game. Eight, eight sacks happened. Eight sacks happened. They lost 27 to 7 to Matt Ryan and company. Mm -hmm. And Dak was pretty awful, but how can you not be awful when you keep, don't have time to throw and you're right. getting rocked from your blind side again and again and again? Correct. Well, 
where was the leadership that day? Well, you can't lead against that. And then they come right home. They lose to Philly, and your guy walk it to them, mm -hmm. 37 to 9. And Dak had a QBR of 16 on a scale of 0 to 100. And he got sacked again four more times. He threw three picks. He was horrendously bad. Where was the leadership then? I don't know. Then came the Thanksgiving Day game that you referred to yesterday. It was the San, then San Diego Chargers, yep. Phillip Rivers. They go to Jerry World on the Thanksgiving stage, and they route. Dallas uh, just blew him off the field 28 to 6 and Dak had a QBR of 19 where was the leadership then? Skip, you, you can't base performance on leadership there are certain things that are handled you look at this team and you look at the way they're playing okay and they they might have lost but Skip they're losing now before they even hit the field okay I, I got it but remember what happened last year because it still just sticks in my craw I mean I'm just I'm I'm, I'm sore like my 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 insides are sore from having to even deal with this because it makes me sick to my stomach. But last year, after that hot start, mm -hmm. Dak's team went 5-8 and eight over the last 13 games, and Pro Football Focus rank graded him out as the 15th best quarterback over the last 13 games. Mm -hmm. Remember, you gave him seven Fs. Mm -hmm. And again, they went to New Orleans and scored 10 points and lost 12-10. to 10. And then Green Bay, they fell behind 31-3. to 3. I mean, that, that looked like a team that had folded up. Then they go to the Jets, and they fall behind 21-6 to six at halftime to a terrible Jets right. team, right? Mm -hmm. And they lose 24-22. to 22. And then it's, it's one thing after another. They played, they, they fell behind Minnesota 14 to nothing and roared back and should have won the game, but they lost. And then at New England, they scored nine points and lost. And then Thanksgiving against Buffalo, it, it was just pathetic how poorly they played. Let me, let me finish. Okay. And then they, they go to Philadelphia and they score nine points. They, they go to Chicago, which I left out. They're, they're behind 31 to 14 at Chicago. Aren't you seeing a pattern here? Yes. And it didn't matter how great a leader Dak was because this year they open up and right away the Rams take it right down the field and score to go ahead seven to nothing. And then here we go. Atlanta's up 21 to nothing, 20 to nothing after a quarter, 29 to 10 at halftime. Then Seattle's up 30 to 15 in the third quarter. Then the Browns come to Jerry World and lead 41 to 14 in the third quarter. And then the Giants, with Dak starting that game, he didn't finish, but he started. He was down 17 to 3 to the New York woeful football giants. My point is that this pattern just keeps happening and it had nothing to do with Dak's leadership or lack thereof. It's Jerry's team. Oh, right? So with what you're what I'm hearing, all of a sudden is that the Cowboys is not as good as everybody at Pro Football Focus and Skip Bayless and everybody's okay, been telling me. Remember what Jerry's answer was yesterday? How much blame do you deserve as yes. the GM? He said, as much credit as I deserve for assembling all this talent. Because what's the stat that we know over the last 10 years? Mm -hmm. Second most pro bowlers in the National Football League belong to Gerald Wayne Jones Jr. But, he, he found them. He but, but, mostly drafted them. But what you tell me about that? What did they have to show for it? You tell me with that leadership, Shannon, what does Dak have to show for that leadership? He's a leader. Over the last uh, 11 games, there were five in this. Yeah, and or, by, by the way, over his last 17 starts and yes, finishes, yes. he's 6 and 11, Dak okay, Prescott. So, so, uh, 6 and 11? So, oh, 6 and 11, Dak. So maybe while Jerry's patting himself on the back about how much talent he's accumulated, maybe they're not as talented as we like to think they are. I, I don't buy that. I liked I didn't love this team, but I liked it. A lot of people loved this team yeah. before the year started. A lot of experts loved this team. Consensus pick to win the NFC East, right? Yes. But most people had them as like the fifth or sixth Super Bowl odds pick. Really? Skip, we go through this every year with the Cowboys. Okay, but not like this one. Because to your point, the last two games have been complete mismatches where they didn't even show up for the Arizona Monday night game right. and against your arch rival. So on Monday night football, they don't show up. And then they go play their arch rival on the road at Washington, and they do not show up. Help me out. Something's really wrong here. And I start with the two new coaches, the head coach and the defensive well, coordinator. Well, well, Skip, at some point in time now, now we, we, we just changed coaches last year. We wiped everything out. We got new coaches. Now, there's a common denominator. There's two common denominators. The owner's still in place, and those players are still there. Now, at some point in time, now, you change coaches again, and you get the same result. So what is it going, what's going on? What have I told you about my team? What do I hate the most about it? 
it really worked when it had Tom Landry at the top and Jimmy Johnson at the top because players feared for their jobs. Right. There was urgency. There was, oh, my God, if I don't, I'm gone. Is there any urgency this week? No. Is anybody feared that heads are going to roll in Dallas? No. Nope. Jerry's hat to skip. But Jerry. Jerry standing pat, man. Jerry always makes it a point. From the time that I walked in this door, I had final say. And don't let anybody tell you different. Now, Correct. he makes that he a point that. to say that. Yep. So, in other words, it's always been my way. So, I Okay. So if that leadership is, is, is not the issue, Jerry leadership is. I agree. It is. It starts from the top because he makes it all about himself. Yes. Does Robert Kraft make it about himself? No. no Nobody does except Nobody him. does. Nobody does. Al Davis used, used to. to. Yeah. And Jerry learned everything he knows about the NFL at the knee, sitting at the knee of Al Davis <laughs> right. at dinner in Thousand Oaks, right. California. Because he's the, because Al was the only owner to sue the commissioner, and Jerry Jones followed suit. Ooh, I love this. Years. Yeah, I want to be you. <laughs> and he became Al Davis. Yes. The difference was Al Davis was a football man. Man. Right. A he, real football man. He was the commissioner of the AFL. He was, he was a coach. Head so coach. He was a lifer. He was a lifer. He wasn't a guy that had accumulated some money and bought a team. No. Nope. He started out in, in, a, in football. Right. And what he taught Jerry is you have to coach the coach. Right. Uh, well, that's fine if you're Al Davis, but if you're Jerry Jones and you're trying to coach the coach, right. are you capable? Right. Are you qualified? You did play college football, but you're an offensive lineman. Right. And I just, I'm not sure about Jerry's football acumen at the highest level. It, Jerry like Jerry likes big names. Now, Al like big names, too. Yeah. Al like big names. He liked guys uh, that could run. That's why he wanted Bo Jackson. He had all these Heisman Trophy winners. And, and when Jerry decided, I want Charles Haley, he went and got him. Really? And when he said, I want Deion Sanders, he went and bought him. Even okay? even against the wishes, because I'm not right. so sure Jimmy he wanted not. Charles Haley. He did not. And we know Coach Parcells did not want T.O., but Jerry one. says, I want T.O., and it's my team. I'm going to buy it. Okay, but Charles and Dion, right. they contributed Let, to Super Bowl a absolutely, championships. Absolutely. Abs no question okay, about it. So now, I give Jerry credit for that. They, now, they wanted Dion. I mean, uh, at that time, Barry Swissel was the head coach. He was. And they wanted Dion because Dion had swung the pendulum of power. At San Francisco. At San Francisco. They had just won for Steve Young. Right. Yep. I got it. All right, I want to move on and talk a little bit more about Tom Brady, but actually how it ended with the Patriots in New England. Let's take a look back at how the Patriots season, how it really ended with that playoff loss to the Titans. Peter King said he should have known Brady would leave New England when he looks back at Brady's demeanor after that loss. King said that Brady was thinking, quote, for a quarterback, New England was hopeless. Mm. King also said that he couldn't believe that Belichick attempted to solve their offensive problems by drafting two tight ends in the third round. So, Shannon, do you agree that New England is hopeless for a quarterback? Right now, we're starting to see that there is not a whole lot in the cupboard. Skip, I look up in the cupboard, and you know what? I'm trying to think, what, what can I make with what I have in these cupboards? And right now, I don't see rice. I don't see flour. I don't see any condiments. And who buys the groceries <laughs> in New England? Coach Belichick. Thank you. He let the cupboard, he let the cupboard get bare. Um, Skip, but it's also important to realize, and I, I, I know Peter King very well, had the New England Patriots offered Tom Brady a contract, Tom Brady would have taken his butt right back to New England. I, I'm with you. Yeah. So this notion yep. that Tom, I, I, I got it. So yep. this this notion that Tom Brady could not wait to get out of New England is not true. Had they offered him a contract, and I'm, I'm not talking about after he had already talked to Bruce Arian and Todd and Jason Light and had gotten says, okay, yes, we will accept you. These are the ram these are, are the parameters of a contract. We give you two years, $50 million guarantee. No, no, no. I'm saying if they had offered him a contract, Tom Brady with that cupboard bear would still be in New England. That is factual. That's not no hypothetical. That's not no, uh, I'm not sure. Yes, he would have. He wanted to finish his career. He wanted to be uh, play one place. When that was not on the table, he says, okay, let me go out here and see what else I can find. And he found the perfect situation. A team that had young, talented wide receivers, an up-and-coming defense that if you didn't put them in harm's way five, six times a game, they could be really good. Yep.
And that's what he and got. And a head coach who is Off fun to play for. And a coach that's offensive-minded. Yeah. Because, he, like you said, for 20 years, his coach was a defensive-minded coach. Yep. So, Skip, for me, I, I don't really know how much better they would be with Tom Brady in New England for the simple fact. The first eight games last year, Skip, they were giving up less than eight points a game. And then what happened? The bottom fell out. At Baltimore on a Sunday night, mm -hmm. it fell out. It fell and out. And it kept falling the rest of the year. And so what that told me is that when, the, when that defense did not hold a team to 17 points or fewer, they were 0-5, even with Tom Brady. Yep. So as long as they were holding teams under eight points, Tom could get to a magic number, and they were fine. When they couldn't get to the, when they couldn't hold a team to 17 points, they lost those games. So I'm not so sure how much different they would be with Tom, considering the cupboard is bare as it is, and the defense is playing as poor as it is, and it's being floated around, Skip, that they're trying to move Stephon Gilmore. What? Now, <clears throat> uh, he's simply by far the best player on your team, not, but, not just on defense, but, on your team. But what is he also? He's 30. Yep. And what also did he do? He asked for more money. Yep. Coach Belichick, Tom Brady ain't never come in there for no money. Mm -hmm. so, every, so everything, that's why Coach Belichick do it. He measures everything by what Tom did. Tom ain't asked for no money. And when Tom asked for a little bit more money, he said, you know what? We begrudge you later. Here's a little $8 million signing bonus, but you got to get up out of here now. Mm -hmm. And that's what he, so 30 years old, you look at Logan Mankins. You look at Richard Seymour. You look at Lawyer Beloy. You look, Skip, you look at all the guys. And what did Coach Belichick do? Once they get to a certain age, Coach Belichick is trying to sell high, trying to sell high. What you give me for it? Okay. So, what word have I used to you several times on this show <laughs> dating back to the Eagles versus Patriots? Sabotage. Sabotage. <laughs> I'm going to use it again. I'm going to suggest it again. And I don't know this for a fact. I'm looking at it from a distance. But what I am seeing is a coach who's turning into what I would call a mad genius, where he's sort of going over the edge into what he believes to be his genius, which is very overrated. I'm going to remind everybody again, before Tom Brady fell out of the sky and into his lap mm -hmm. after Drew Bledsoe got hurt in the second game of the 01 season, Bill Belichick, as a head coach in Cleveland, and then for two years, it's a year plus right. in New England, was 16 games under 500. Not very successful. No. And yet, he's obviously, along with Tom Brady, and I say mostly because of Tom Brady, been to nine Super Bowls with six rings. And I believe that he believes more than ever in his own genius, that he has become the classic legend in his own mind. Mm -hmm. And he believed that as he now approaches 70 years of age, he had earned the right to go solo. Yeah to get Tom Brady up out of there by any means necessary mm -hmm. and to be able to, to at least have the opportunity to show the world it's all about him. He wanted this stage to himself. And for the first time ever, he is participating in a national ad campaign for Subway. <laughs> and that's why I call him Coach Subway, because they're now relentless. They're yeah. all over. He, he's, he's rivaling Baker Mayfield for commercial <laughs> time on television because it's about his ego that he's finally flexing in the wake of Tom Brady. Right. Tom Brady's gone to Tampa. I'm the face and of the franchise. And I don't even think Tom has a national spot now. No. Nope. Okay. So I'm with you that Tom's in his heart of hearts. Sure, he wanted to finish as a Patriot. His heart is still in New England. Everybody gets that. Yep. But Belichick made it impossible for him to finish because I believe he finished last year, at, back to Peter King, mm -hmm. thinking no quarterback could survive here with that stuff that I have to work mm -hmm. with. His receivers, I'll point it out again, Pro Football Focus said, Worst separation in the league. Well, if they were worse last year, they're even worse that, this year. You know what? They are worse because he did nothing to make it much better. He added Demir Bird, who was yes. about the fifth receiver for Kyler and company in, in Arizona. Arizona. Okay? And then the great stat is, as Peter King points out, he goes into the third round and drafts two tight ends as if they're going to be Gronk and Aaron Hernandez. <laughs> and guess what? Combined, those two rookie uh, tight ends... Oh, yeah. They have played one game. One was activated just for this debacle Sunday at the hands of the 49ers. 
with one target and one catch. Those are your two new star potential tight ends, mm -hmm. right? No. Okay, so it, it, it got you nowhere. It got Cam Newton nowhere right. but on his back, right? Right. Because he can't find anybody open because they're no good. Right. And, and Julian Edelman, as you pointed out yesterday, he's even worse than he was last year when he led the league in drops. Now he's broken down, beat up, shell of himself, and he can't get open. Right. Well, it's, it, to me, it's Bill Belichick saying, hey, watch me. I don't care what's on offense because I'll take a bunch of no names on defense and I'll put it together with my cogs and I'll show you we can win with just defense. I don't even need Stefan Gilmore anymore. Right. He's a defensive player of the year. I don't need defensive player right. of the year. I need cogs who, who do it my way. And that's, Skip, but that's a part of his genius is that he's taken players that, I mean, anybody can take an Aaron Donald or Khalil Mack and be and have a great defense, but he takes guys, the Kyle Van Noy, he takes guys you never heard of. Okay. Stephon Gilmore turned into it, but Stephon Gilmore wasn't like that in Buffalo. He got with Coach Bell. He was pretty he good. Was pretty, he, was, he was pretty good, Skip. I know, because we've had Rob Ryan, the great Rob Ryan, on the show, and he coached him there, and he was like, this kid was unbelievably Skip, good in the a, shadows. He turned him into a defensive player of the year. Yep, well, he did. And, so, and that's, okay, and, I, I, I got and that. And that's how Coach, but that's Coach Belichick's genius, Skip. It's taking... Is taking the Tom Brady's. You're not going to get the same amount of credit for taking Tom Brady as you would for Peyton Manning. Mm -mm. Peyton Manning was the number one overall pick. He got to, like, how did he find a six-round draft pick? How did he find a Gronk in the what, second round? And then a Hernandez in the third round? And he's finding all these unhidden gems. Okay, but there are a bunch of swings and misses, yeah, too. Yeah, whole well, bunch. Skip. There are more swings and misses Way more. than hits. Way more. But it's the ones that he's hit on. He got two guys on the all-century team. Well, three. Well, he, that was what you call him. Um, Vinatieri was there before he got there. Yep. But he got two of his draft picks in 20 years are on the all-century team. There are not a whole lot of coaches that can say that. So the, the hits are so great that we forget all about the misses. Look at all those receivers he's drafted. Yep. Or signed. <laughs> or signed. Mohamed Sanu. Yeah, last it's like, year. really? Wow. There's a lot of misses. I, look, he's trying to prove he is the greatest, that he's the GOAT, and it's going south. And it, I, I, it, it does look, to use Peter King's word via Brady, it, it feels hopeless to me. Maybe you see some sign no, of life. No, I don't no, see any no, sign of life. No. And, and, but at, at, at that point, Skip, you know, you, I, I want to prove that I can do it without you. But I don't think, look. I don't think you can make, now you get an opportunity, but I, let them keep the conversation going. Now, there's going to be a definitive, <clears throat> a definitive way to determine it. If Brady goes out and win, Coach Belichick's going to have to win a title yep. in order for it to say, well, see, it was basically 50-50 because each won a title without the other. But if Brady wins a title and Coach Belichick doesn't, oh, Tom Brady's getting the credit. Yep. Just like Joe got the credit. It, I got it. it so in the end, I stand by what I've said for four years on this show. I believe Belichick was just trying to make it extremely difficult for Tom to succeed as the Patriot quarterback. It was getting harder and harder because he was making it harder and harder on Brady. But Tom's MacGyver. No matter how hard you make it, you would, if you give him something, he'll make something out of it. That's a so, good analogy. I would agree. <laughs> so it didn't yep. matter. Yep. Give him just a little <laughs> safety pin, right? Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't yeah. matter. Give you him look a at, hair clip. Like, oh, yeah, they got, you know, I'm watching MacGyver. A lot of people don't remember MacGyver, but you do, Skip. You're like, oh, they got him this time. And the next thing you know, he he done turned, he done turned a bathtub into a motorboat, and he's getting on the water, and he done made something That's spectacular. That's Brady. That Thank was you. Brady. Thank you. I agree. How he took, now, Skip, his greatest, his greatest achievement is not the Super Bowls. How he got that offense to win 12 games last year. That might be his greatest achievement. You have finally seen the light. I'm, I told I, you that last year. Skip, and you said, "Oh, stop it." Skip, I'm looking. Skip, I'm looking. I watched. I watched him the other day. I'm like, "This dude, terrible." They ain't got a whole lot of guys that can go someplace else and play. And I told you, he drove it 75 yards. I was actually 60 yards for the touchdown against Miami in the last regular season game. They had the two seed in the palms of their hands, and the defense allowed. Fitz magic to go 75 yeah. and 13 yeah. to win the game at the buzzer. I I got I, I got okay. I, I got a reevaluate <laughs> some of the things that I said about Thank Tom you. last year after watching that team play America. Over the last you two heard weeks. it here first. Yeah, I got to I got to reevaluate some of the things that I said. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness.
no mercy. Pro Bowl safety and former Carolina Panther Eric Reed remains a free agent and looks like that will continue so far in 2020. Reed declined an offer from the Washington football team to sign with their practice squad. The safety said, quote, I just don't think playing on the practice squad is reflective or indicative of my career. Shannon, should he have accepted Washington's offer to join the practice squad? Uh, Skip, when I got this, when uh, <clears throat> I got the rundown, yep, and uh, I text Steve and look at this thing, I said, he believes his resume, he's overqualified for the practice squad. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> you look at Dez, Dez signed um, to the Ravens practice squad, and hopefully he shows them enough. And I get it, Eric Reed says, like, I was just in the league. Um, I've been a Pro Bowl player. I'm only 29 years of age. I think and, he's still 28, but go ahead. Yeah, he's about yeah. to be. Uh, he turns 29 in December. Yep. Um, and he's like, okay, I play for you, Ron. What do you need to see to convince you that I can still play at a high level in this league? And me going out there, playing behind someone that I believe I'm better than. Now, that's his choice. Now, me, sign me up. Because all I want is an opportunity to get in front of you to show you what I can do on the practice field, and then you're going to have no choice but to activate me. Shannon Sharp, seventh-round pick, first training camp. You just needed to get I your do, foot I, on I the field. I just need to get my foot on the door. Yep. And plus, Skip, I'm in no position. Yep. It's like a, a pandemic. Okay, Skip, I had a great job. I'm making 200000 a year. But this other job comes along, and it's only going to pay me $75,000. Yep. Skip, I got to eat. Yeah. Now, maybe I got enough money, like, no, I'm going to wait for the ideal situation to come along. This is Eric Reed's choice. If he says, look, I'm, I'm going to wait, I'm going to wait, hopefully something comes along. But I'm just saying, me, I'm going to get that. I'm, all I want to do is get in front of Ron Rivera, and after one practice, he's going to have no choice but to activate me and sign me to the active roster. And from that point on, I'm going to be on the active roster making big boy money moving forward. Yep. But he feels that what he's accomplished in his career and how well he's playing, that the practice squad is beneath him, and, it, uh, uh, and he shouldn't have to dignify himself by going out and having to prove that he can still play at a level. That's his choice. Couldn't be me. Because mm. if I want to play in the league, if I need a job, and I need this job, I'm going to get that. Yep. I'm with you. My first thought when I saw this story last night was, man, I, I wish he'd just seize the opportunity. Yes. And then go take huge advantage of it, because he would. Yes. He'd be a starter before you know it. Yes. Because I believe they're going to elevate a kid named Cameron Curl, a seventh-round right. pick out of Arkansas. Right to be the starting safety in place of Landon Collins, who had he got off to a flying start the yeah. other day with the sack right. rumble of yep. Andy Dalton, mm -hmm. tore his Achilles. I, I don't understand Achilles tears. They just happen out of nowhere. And they've been having a lot in the NFL they out have, of nowhere. Out of nowhere, and he's done for the year. And, it's boy, it's, it's almost career-threatening mm -hmm. when you have one of those. <sighs> Huge opportunity for the coach that you just played for in Carolina, who does believe in you. Right. And what did Eric Reed do last year for Ron Rivera in Carolina? He set franchise records, mm -hmm. for what it's worth, but they're, they're franchise right. records for tackles mm -hmm. and sacks in a season by a safety, safety. By safety. Right. It's pretty great. Right. Right? He had the second most tackles in the whole National Football League at safety to the guy you love in Arizona, Buda Baker. Baker. Is that pretty good? Very that's, good. That's very good. Right. So he had a year last year. Right. And I was actually surprised he even got that opportunity because, just to remind everybody, he and Colin Kaepernick sued this league for right. collusion. Right. And they quote unquote won. It didn't actually. They didn't actually win it. They it got settled. Right. So they they did win. And to considering me. how <clears throat> Skip, and considering how that owner feels yep. about those that kneeled in protest yep. for the mere fact that Ron Rivera was says, look, I want to bring him in from the practice squad is a feat in and of itself. It would, you're exactly right. So I was very happy he got the opportunity. And now, is he overqualified? For, yes, he is yes. to start with. Yes. But it's just get your foot in the door. That's it. And then the rest will be history. Yeah, yeah by the end of the week, oh, they go like, okay, we're elevating you to the actor roster. Yeah. As my mom used to tell me, don't cut off your nose to spite your face. Yes. And that's kind of what you're doing here. Mm -hmm. Pride goeth before the fall. Right. You got so much pride. I'm, I'm just going to sit this one out. I, I'm going to sit home till a real team calls me that says, we will elevate you into our starting lineup. We need a starter at safety. 
Well, that would have happened in Washington, I'm pretty sure, right. very quickly. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree, Skip. And that, that's, how, that's how I am. I just want the opportunity. Just let me get in the door, and then I can show you what I'll do. If this is what you think of me, if you say practice squad and going to pay me $12,000 a week, okay, fine, whatever. But I'm going to show you. I guarantee you in a week's time, I'm going to be on the active roster because yep. I know I'm better than what you have. I just need to get an opportunity to get in front of you and show it. Yeah. So, obviously, you and I have agreed for, what, two years that Colin Kaepernick is not going to play any more football no, in the no. National Football League? No. Yesterday, the big story was young Colin has been cast for the movie about Colin Kaepernick's right. life and times. Yeah. Can't wait. Great. Mm -hmm. Eric Reed sort of beat the system mm -hmm. because he was right there in lockstep with Colin in protest right. lockstep. And he, he lived to tell. Right. He was still a very viable, I'm not going to say he was a star in Carolina, but he was a really good player. Yeah, he played he, he was extremely well. But, Skip, the vitriol, even though uh, Andy Young and Ralph David Abernathy and some of the next guys that were next to Dr. King, they didn't get the vitriol that Dr. King got. No, they did not. Kaepernick, That's true. even though yeah. he was right next to Cap, he didn't get that vitriol that Cap got. Yeah. And that's what happened. I, I think and, owners viewed him as an accessory, right? Exactly, right. exactly. Because they're like, you know what? You wouldn't even did that had he not talked you into it. So we, it's kind of like my brother. My, we used to get in trouble, and my, my grandfather would say, well, you the oldest. You should have known better. Shannon is following, that boy following you. So basically, they held Cap responsible for what Reed did, even though Reed was a grown man and could make his own decision. He said, this is what I want to do. I believe he's right. Mm. I would have taken the opportunity. I'm not mad at him that he didn't. Yep. He's perfectly within his right. That's what America's about. We have rights. And his right is like, nah, I'm better than that. I don't want that. I would have taken that opportunity to get, my, get, into, get into Washington, and at the end of the week, I'd have been on the active roster. You would have. I agree. But Eric Reed's thinking, once upon a time, I was the 18th overall pick in the first round of the draft out of LSU where I loved him. I used to rave about him on the other show mm -hmm. I used to do. He's a player, man. Yeah. He's a ball hawk playmaker. Mm -hmm. And in 2013, I know it's seven years ago, he, he did make a pro He made a pro bowl. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so, but, but Skip, here's the thing. There are a lot of first round picks without a job. A lot of them. And they were hired at 18. Yep. So I, you, and by you the have, way, Cam Irving has a job for my Dallas Cowboys, and he's not qualified anymore to have the starting left tackle job. You, you were geeked about Cam Irving. Yeah. I, I think Skip forgot that on that Monday night game that Aaron Donald had. I know, but he was once upon a time the 18th overall pick. Yeah. I think he was maybe 19th, so right in there with Eric Reed. Yep. And, and Rivera said, you know, the last month that we're fortunate, we're, we're, we're fortunate position where we have Landon Collins, a guy like Eric Reed that would fit us here. But if we didn't have Connors, uh, Collins, believe me, I would give him a call. He gave him a call. Gave him a call. Because at the end of the day, Skip, when we got guys on the roster, let's go. And plus, whoo, that would have been very interesting because we know how Jack Del Rio feels about certain situations. How would that dynamic work? That's a good I one. Mean, you, 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 hey. Was that operating here on Eric's part? Was he thinking, I don't want to do man, that? Look, hey, Maybe. Man, I'm trying to skip. I'm trying to get this money. Mm -hmm. And like I said, and Jack understands that, look, we're going to leave political, what yep. we like or dislike out of this. I'm here to coach. Like I said, I've known Jack. I've known Jack a lot. Played against Jack. Mm -hmm. He was in. Um, he was with me in Baltimore, Skip. I and covered came, him as a Dallas Cowboy. He came back. Yeah. I, I played against him when he was in Minnesota. Yep. And he was on that staff mm -hmm. uh, in Baltimore. And then he was the D coordinator in Denver. So I know Jack. Jack and I go back 25, 30 years. So I know him well. But at some point, you put those differences aside, Skip. Because the common goal is to try to win. And, like, Eric Reed made his decision. Hopefully someone does call him and he gets an opportunity. I was going to say, I just hope his phone rings. Yeah. But probably more times than not, Skip, it's hard for me to see a situation where you just get in and you automatically become the starter. Yep. Because how do they elevate you in front of someone, even though with your credentials, someone that's been practicing and that's been there? Mm. Jerry Jones, give him a call. Yeah, uh, probably not. Yeah. Oh, oh, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I'm joking. <laughs> could he use him? Yes. Yeah, they could use me right now. Hey, that's true. I think, yeah, anyone. Shannon, <laughs> uh, anyone's available right now to help the Cowboys. No mercy. 
While talking about wearing a pair of Kobe shoes while playing for the Lakers in the finals, Anthony Davis may have unintentionally snubbed LeBron in the GOAT debate. AD said, quote, it felt great to represent Chicago in a Kobe 5. Two GOATs. It was a great moment. So, Shannon, should LeBron take offense to this? Two GOATs? Skip Bayless. What? If you, if you did like I did and read the interview, they were talking about sneakers. That's what they were talking about, sneakers. Anthony Davis is from Chicago. If you're from Chicago, the Jordan shoe is the gospel. It is the Bible, even if you're not from Chicago, because that is what started it all, okay? The Kobe, everybody loves the Kobe. The Kobe shoe, yes. Now, I have more Jordans than I have LeBrons. I have more LeBrons than I have Kobe's. But for you to try to take make this leap, and here's another thing. Because someone says that, okay, the Co I like Kobe is this or Jordan is that, that doesn't mean they're taking a shot at LeBron. Skip, stop doing it. I know what you're trying to do. What you're trying to do is sow dissension. But there's no jealousy between us. We good. We've already turned the team over to AD. This is AD's team. But we're just going to do this thing. AD, this is how we're going to do it. But I see what you're trying to do. They were talking about shoes. I love the Kobe also. I wish I had gotten into collecting Kobe's sooner like I did the Jordans, like I did LeBron's, but I didn't. But that's okay. They were talking about shoes. And when you're talking about shoes, right now the most popular shoes are what? The Jordan, the LeBron, and the Kobe's. You know that, I know that. It's definitely not those orthopedics, those PPEs that mm. somebody tried to make, mm. the Skittles mm. and the Fruit Loops. Nobody want those. Mm. By the way, those are the most comfortable, no, that, that, most no, that, comfortable that. sneakers I've ever worn. Of course, Skip, because you got to be on your feet all day. Mm. You, you, you're an essential worker. Mm. You don't get to sit down. You are all day long. You better get something comfortable. <sighs> Shannon, you know and I know this is just so wrong. What? This is so disrespectful. How? To, to the man who showed Anthony Davis how to win a ring. He didn't, he, he didn't carry him to the ring because in the end, AD carried LeBron to the ring. There ain't nobody carried nobody, Skip. We walk, in, we walk side by side through the door. He's not just talking about shoes when he says two goats. I gave him the first goat. Obviously, I believe that it's not even close between Michael and LeBron. But because Anthony grew up in Chicago or in, in the suburban Chicago area, yeah, he's, he's going to go goat on the king of Chicago, Michael Jeffrey Jordan. I get that one. But he's not just saying the Kobe fives are, are goat shoes. He's saying Kobe's the goat. So he's going Michael and Kobe because Anthony, as we know, he, he just idolized Kobe Bryant and, in fact, he was channeling Kobe Bryant at the end of game two against the Nuggets when he said, give me the damn ball, I'll shoot it, because LeBron, as we remember, didn't want to shoot it. Then stop doing that. Well, he didn't. And I, now that no, I just that, accidentally no, no, brought no, no, it up, no, no, look, no, 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 look at the circle. LeBron, the play has called for you, you and you shady. froze. You froze, and Anthony ran across the whole formation and says, I, I, R Rondo, throw me the ball. I'm going to channel Kobe, and then he yells, Kobe because they're wearing Mamba jerseys. Yep. And LeBron James stood there petrified because he was one for six in the fourth quarter, 0 for three from three, and he said, I don't want any part of this. And that was a big, arguably the biggest shot of the playoffs. So, okay. So we beat him in five still. Uh, I don't know. I know. You gave him that kind of momentum. They know momentum. that. Ugh, they know momentum. Know. They right. had momentum. You remember they had uh, momentum in game? And what, what game? Was that game three that they won? Yeah. And, you know, uh, he was up there shimmying. He hit that big three in AD phase, and he was doing all that. Yep. Shut it down. So, Shannon Sharp, you grew up in a household with a big brother who was a really good athlete and yep. a really, really, really good football player. And he rose and shone all through college and then into the Green Bay Packer fandom and, and heroics. And, and he looked like he was on a Hall of Fame arc. Yes. And then here came little brother. Yeah. And at some point, some morning, I don't know what morning it was, little brother woke up and said, you know what? I'm just better than he is. There was some point in your career where yeah. you said, I'm just better than he is. Well, it, I don't know if I was, I was better, but I know I, uh, the morning I woke up, I think I was about... I think I was about 14, 
And I say, today, I'm going to beat him in one-on-one. Okay. I say, I'm done. with Basketball, right? Basketball. Okay. I say, I'm going to beat him. I say, Spank, let's go play. Mm. He's like, all right. And I beat him. And what were your sizes at this point? Uh, he, was, he, was, he was still bigger. I was probably, Skip, you got to realize, as a freshman, I was only 5'5", five, five, 132 pounds. So I was probably about 5'5", five, 5'6". Five, five, and he probably was a senior. But I beat him. Well, how did you beat him? What you mean? How? Cheat? No, ain't no cheat. Ain't no cheat. I just, I just, I just, I just had, I had to do it. Cause it was, it was, it was kill. But see, when you brother skip, you don't look at age. He's three years older than me. You don't look at size. That's my brother. I should be well, able to beat him. If he was a senior, then he was what? Six he one? He was six foot. Six was, foot? Yeah, he was six foot. And, and probably weighed 200? No, he wasn't that big. He was like sure? 175. I 175, don't know. 180. But I put it on him. He never forgot it. Sterling Sharp was put together. Yeah, oh, he was. Oh, yeah, 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 he was. Okay. But, you know, you make it seem like I was better cheating. I, I know, but well, you, you were at that point. You were 5'5", five, five, <laughs> 130 pounds. I do not believe you beat him when you were 14 I beat years him. old. Ask him, ask him, he'll tell you. And once I beat him, light went off of my head like, that. Because huh. I know what he was as an athlete, and I just beat him. It's over. Okay. When... AD hit that shot on that day against those Nuggets. I think he just woke up and said, you know what? I, I, I'm just better than he is. Better who? Better than LeBron James. Oh, my goodness. There you go. Little brother you... decided he was better than big yeah. brother. You, you know it, and I know it. You could just see his body language. AD is a top five player. There's no question about that now. The, well, I don't know. AD is a top five player. I did not think he had any of this in him. I know he had it in him. From long two-point range, he was flawless. He could not miss. Mm -hmm. He carried you with long twos. Yes. And then every once in a while, a big three. And obviously, he just dominated in the paint. Skip. So he's thinking, it's my do, team. Do it's you my time. I'll just go double goat on LeBron James. I'll go MJ and I'll go Kobe. Do you realize, double goat at him. Do you realize LeBron James finished two points? from leading the entire playoffs in points, rebounds, and assists. Not a series, mm. the entire playoffs. AD had two more points than LeBron James, or LeBron would have led everybody mm. in points, rebounds, and assists throughout the entirety of the playoffs. You're talking about in average or total? Total. Average in yeah. everything. Everything in total because he just played more games. Whoa, 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 whoa. AD played the same amount of games. Yep. He had so it's two just between points. those two, right? Yeah. Hmm. Who should have been MVP of the finals? Don't do well, it. Skip, don't do it. Do, Skip, why would, you, why would you even say that? You know I'm right Skip, about this. The man averaged 30, 12, and 9, and he should have been a finals MVP with those numbers? Doesn't he have any? He, he's a smart young man. When he says double goats, MJ and Kobe, he's, he's talk, not talking about shoes. He's talking about shoes. No. Yeah. He knows because he's just like in awe of Kobe's legacy, the late, great Kobe Bryant. Kobe special. So he double goaded your man LeBron. And, and it's just little brother saying, I'm now big brother. No, no, first of all, AD does not wear the LeBron. He said early in his career he wore the Jordans. And then he turned, he 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 morphed into the Kobe's. Yep. And the Kobe is a great shoe. It is. That's it's, what, it's low cut that's and what, it's a little dangerous to wear. But he said it's for a the, big man. It felt so light on his feet, he just said, I didn't care. But but and look at my guy. Mm. My guy what got the mids. He got a little low. Now the 18 is gonna be a low. Mm. But look at my guy. My guy don't have no ankle problem. Mm. My guy don't have no ankle problem. He rolled his ankle. You saw it. Stepped on the guy's shoe. His ankle rolled over, touched the float. <laughs> Untie that shoe. The kind of injury that would have cost you 10 games when he was a Pelican, right? No, I'm talking about, I'm talking about Bron. Oh, I thought you meant... No, no. Because AD, AD kept turning things yeah. and banging up things. But see, that's and what, he kept toughing it out. I didn't think he had it in but him. But see, that's what, he my, arrived. that's what my guy did for AD. Yep, I'll buy that. that. You got to be great every night in every moment. You got to play be, through it. Because in December, the Pelicans were done. They were playing for, uh, you know, try, maybe hopefully not get, get a top five pick. Yep. But now on this stage, mm. think about it, Skip. You're playing at Wembley Stadium. 
You playing at the big arenas like Jay Z. Jay Z can't do a can't do a normal arena. He do Wembley. He do uh, Giant State, the Meadowlands. That's what he does. He's one of those. So that's what mm. AD plays on now. Mm. He's Springsteen. He's Bob Dylan. Do we play these types of stadiums? I, I saw the Rolling Stones at Wembley. Yeah, and it was an event. We don't do it arenas. Was epic. That's what LeBron say, bro. And that was an arena that mm -hmm. you played on. Yeah, we do stadiums. Mm. 85,000, 100,000 seat venues. Mm. That's what we do. Mm. There is a new king in LA. His name's AD? No, no, no that's the king right there. Uh. You see, when, he, when we know, come. Maybe AD should do the next ad with the, the keychain dangling <laughs> with the little crown. You notice, know when we come, the Dodgers hadn't won a World Series in 32 years. Mm. What'd they do? Now, the Galaxy next. Now, the Rams might have a little something. Come on, Rams. Mm. We might make it a four, a four out of five. They got a shot. But I tell you who won't be a part of this. Mm. <laughs> them old flippers. Mm. <laughs> mm. Hey, Pat Bam, how the work out going in them Tims? Mm. Oh. Kawhi, you working out? Paul George. Paul mm. George shooting on the rim right now with no mm. backboard. Because he know if he's backboard, he's going to hit the side of it. Mm. So he got to just have a rim up there, Jenny. Well, <laughs> according to Anthony Davis, you got to disqualify that Goat James nickname because it doesn't work. Yeah, no, no. It it's does. Michael mm. and it's Kobe. You know what, Skip? Double Goat. Skip, you know what? I think it's time for the Goat Mass and the Crown to come back out. Really? You really? need a reminder. Huh. For, for what reason? Because he the Goat. We need to have a parade. Uh, uh, is there any possible way we can have a parade? We need to celebrate. Huh. <laughs> You're going to be leading all the parades. LeBron uh, will be leading the Dodger parade because he <laughs> gloms on to every no, successful no, 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 Skip, You know we've been a part of this. Happy? We've been a part of this from the jump. Now, don't do that, Skip. No mercy. The Cowboys have fallen from NFC East favorites to start the year to now Pro Football Focus saying that they might not win more than one more game this season. At 2-5, and five, they have seen a large number of injuries this season and may even be down to their third straight quarterback this week. Fox Sports NFL analyst Eric Dickerson joining us now. Eric, first of all, you look great. Congrats to the Dodgers. <laughs> I know you're happy about that win, but I got to ask you about the Cowboys. What's the biggest reason for their collapse? Well, uh, I think the biggest reason is offensive line. I mean, I think a lot of people don't put a lot of stock into an offensive line, especially if you don't know football. You think the, the, the guys outside, the quarterback, and the receivers make up a football team, but you start with your offensive line. Offensive line for the Dallas Cowboys has been decimated. I mean, I think they're playing with their third, third string backups. The right tackle's gone. The center retired. Uh, you know, one, another thing is you don't have any OTA. You have no preseason. You know, you don't get a chance to know your head coach, your coach, coach head coach, and get a chance to know you, know the offense. Uh, it's just a lot of problems over there right now. But the main thing, really, is the offensive line. I mean, and, and people ask me, oh, man, how does Zeke look? I mean, Zeke looks bad now. I said, look, it's not Zeke. I've been in that same situation. You know, when you don't have the guys up front, I don't care how great you are, how big you are, how fast you are. If those guys aren't blocking, you can't run. People have a tendency to forget that those are pros on the other side of that ball also. So they're there to stop you. But that's why, for me, when I had great offensive line, I would always buy them here. I mean, I think that's important. I mean, <laughs> I did, the little money I was making, I was most definitely going to give it to them by offensive line. I, I really believe the problem right there is the offensive line. I think the collapse, I think they brought into the hype. There's too many excuses, E.D. I mean, look, nobody had OTAs. Nobody had mini camps. Everybody had abbreviated training camps. Nobody had preseason games. Basically, everything was Zoom meetings and walkthrough. And this is no excuse. And you look at the defense, okay, Ha Ha Clinton Dix was a big signing. Uh, uh, Skip loved that signing. He couldn't even make it out of training camp. Decided Everson Griffin. He's been traded already. Why is that? They bucked the system. They said, what, what you're trying to, to impose upon right. us, Mike Nolan, it does not work. And he said, okay, you're gone and you're gone. Okay. Dur uh, Don Terry Poe. I haven't seen Don Terry Poe on the field in at least two to three games. And if it is, it's for one snap. Gerald McCoy got hurt. So all of the big names that they signed didn't, uh, hasn't panned out, <clears throat> and their defense is awful. And we keep blaming. We blame the coach. Because remember last year, E.D., it was all about uh, Jason Garrett. Whoa, Jason Garrett. Oh, eight and eight Jason Garrett. He can't motivate. Like, <laughs> somebody told me Jason Garrett couldn't motivate a bull out of a shoe. I was like, what? Skip, he can't motivate. He said, no. So now they got rid of Jason Garrett. They got rid of Chris Richard. They got rid of uh, uh, Rod Marinelli. They bring in a made man. Skip told me Mike McCarthy, a made man. He made Aaron Rodgers. 
They got. I didn't say oh. that. They won a Super Bowl together a decade ago. Oh, a decade ago. Oh, <laughs> they got Mike McCarthy, a made man. Now, look, it's every single year, ED, we go through this. The Cowboys are supposed to do this. And we evaluate, we look at them, but look at that talent. ED, you've been around, team. You know it takes more than just talent to win and to win big in this league. The Cowboys are high. Jerry Jones has been selling them. He does a great job of selling them. But the Cowboys is not nearly as talented, not nearly as good as people make them out to be every single year. Mm. So I have a question for both of you Hall of Famers. Do you have any idea how hard this is on me? a lifelong Cowboy <laughs> fan to be living here in Los Angeles, to have to look at Eric Dickerson wearing a Dodger <laughs> top, Tommy Lasorda jersey, because they just won the World Series last night. And I'm still having to put up with this man across from me because his LeBron-led Lakers won the championship, the COVID championship, cubic zirconia championship, but it is a championship oh, nonetheless. Thank you. And I have to live with it. And the Rams are starting to look like they got a shot. That, I'm talking to the Ram ambassador here. They're, they're looking pretty good. I know they laid an egg up at San Francisco, but they looked really good against the Bears on Monday night. And now I have to live with the team that is historically, inexplicably, all-time bad. I have never, Mr. Dickerson, seen anything like this in all my years of covering all the sports. Never have I seen it this bad for a team that most prognosticators really liked. Consensus pick to win the NFC East. Maybe a fifth or sixth choice among the odds makers to win the Super Bowl. I thought it was a pretty talented team. I said 10 wins. You said maybe nine. You gave right. them maybe nine. Yep. They don't even compete. It started with the opening drive on opening Sunday night at SoFi against your Rams, Mr. Rambassador. They just took the ball and drove it right down Dallas's throat and were up seven to nothing. And then here we went. Atlanta comes to Jerry World. They're up 20 to nothing after a quarter, 29 to 10 at halftime. At Seattle, my team is down 30 to 15 in the third quarter. Then here come the Browns, who were on and off. They were still struggling, hit and miss. They're up 41 to 14 in the third quarter. The Giants, while Dak was still afloat, still upright, still healthy, and the offensive line was still relatively healthy, they trailed the Giants 17 to 3 early in the second quarter before Andy Dalton finally stole that one back for them. And then Arizona, a Monday night football game, you just quit. <laughs> you just roll over and play dead. And then you go play your arch rival in Washington. And you quit from the outset. You don't even compete. You're done after a quarter of that game on that run by Antonio Gibson, 12 yards. He just danced into the end zone. Even if it were flag football, they wouldn't have taken his flag. If we could see that, we're seeing it right now. So, Eric, I, I get what you say about the offensive line, but that's right now. It's decimated. Now they got no shot. Maybe Andy Dalton, maybe Ben DiNucci, the seventh-round rookie at quarterback. Okay, Philly's going to win this game 40-3. to But when I look back, they never responded to the two new coaches, the head coach or the defensive coordinator. The two mics dropped the mics. I've said from the start, it just didn't work. Somehow, this team mutinied against both of them, rejected all the teaching and coaching on both sides of the ball because th this is – all-time bad. Worst defense maybe in the history of pro football. And the offense is running away with turnovers. They, they lead the league by far in turnovers and in turnover margin because they've only taken it away twice. That's the worst. What, what's going to happen? You're going to get blown out every game, and it has to go back to the coaches because I still see a lot of talent. Skip, you ain't sure that 40 yard run that Antonio Gibson had first. <laughs> early. It's, it hurts they, they too much. Yeah, they do have a lot of talent, and you and you're right. Think about man. Let's go back to Mike McCarthy. Remember Aaron Rodgers? You know Aaron Rodgers. They, they didn't get along up there in Green nope. Bay. You see why? I mean Mike Nolan, his defense. I mean it is horrible. I mean one thing is, and players that when you're on the field, you know what's going on. Sometimes coaches won't listen. Yeah, like, I'm serious. Coaches won't. We're like Shannon. You know, 
man, we're out here in the battle. We know what's going on. We, we know what will work. We know what they're looking at. They're calling the plays before they before we even run them. I mean, the Cowboys right now, when you when you talk, hear the players saying, look, these coaches have us unprepared. They don't know what they're doing. You know, that's a bad sign. When you're losing, everything is magnified. When you're winning, I say this all the time, if you're winning, if you came in through a bunch of trash on the floor <laughs> and the Cowboys right now were 7-0, and everybody would be like, man, this is how we win. We just a bunch of guys having a good time. But when you're one, what are they, one and four? When you're one and two. four, two. I mean, two, what are they, two, two and four? Two and five, yeah. two and five. Yeah. Two and five. Man, nobody cares. I mean, well, I take that back. They care about the Cowboys because they are the Cowboys. They expect more out of them. But right now, this team is just they're not they're, they're not a unit. They're, they're not a good fit for, for I mean, you know, you got you got stars over here, you got stars over there. You got you when you don't have Dak, and I I said this before, when when and, and I know Shannon, you're not you're not a big Dak fan. I, I think I just think Dak's the best thing for the Cowboys. But when you lost Dak, you lost everything right there. I mean, I, you, you, I saw it coming. I mean, when you lost your, your your leader, your quarterback, the guys who they respond to, like that hit they put on on Andy Dalton. If that would have been Dak, they to hit. Oh, the whole team would have responded. So you know, this team is like, hey man, we're not responding to these coaches, and you know, we just we just waiting for the season to be over with. You can tell. You know, they're just waiting for Week 16. Eric, do you realize how blessed both of you were? <laughs> you got to play for the great John Robinson, obviously for Ron Meyer, who you played for at SMU. And Shannon got Mike, yeah, uh, Mike Shanahan, Mike Shanahan, Shanahan and Reeves. Ryan Billick. And, and, and you did, and Dan Reeves. It's, it's greatness. You know, like, like you have people you admire and you fear a little bit because oh, yeah. you know they are really good at what they're doing. You believe in what they're telling you, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, but, that, but, that's, that's that's true. But Edie, I think the biggest thing for me is that I always played for so I played for coaches that ownership stayed out of it. Mr. Bowler was not ha didn't have a radio show. He didn't have a TV show. Art Modell <laughs> did not have a radio show. He did not have a TV show. So whatever the coaches, I never thought for one second that if something happened on the field and the coaches that I could go upstairs to uh to Mr. B or I could go upstairs <laughs> to Art Modell. Where did he do that at, Edie? You can't do that because <laughs> if, do if, that. You, if you can circumvent the coach's authority, now the players know that you can do that. Well, he has nothing. And that's what Jerry Jones has allowed these players to do since Jimmy left what, and, and Parcells. So basically, in his 30-year tenure, he's on the team, is that for what? Jimmy was there for what, five years? From, from what? 89, 90, 91, 92. 93. Five. So yep. five years. Mm -hmm. And then he, Parcells was there for what, like three, four years. So three. for basically nine years, they had the players had to be held accountable by the head coach. They couldn't go to Jerry. Once that's been removed, the coach, the players can go to Jerry with Jerry and, and they, Jerry like want to be their buddy. And he takes matters into their own hand. Jerry is a bigger part of the problem than he actually realized. I agree. That's the problem. He doesn't realize that he's the problem. <laughs> Well, Jerry's the, Jerry's the most famous cowboy of all. Yeah, yeah he well, is. Jerry's, and that's not a good thing, though, E.D. That's, yeah. not, that's not a good thing. I agree yeah, and you know what? We're obviously about to have elections here in this country. I, I wish as fans we could vote Jerry out, but we can't. <laughs> you can't. We can't remove him. That's the thing. Right? Oh, yeah, that, that's, for, that's forever. That's like the Supreme Court. It is. That's, for, <laughs> that's until they decide to go. No mercy. This weekend starts Saturday strong with the big noon Saturday game of the week. Jim Harbaugh and the 13th ranked Wolverines face off with the Spartans in one of the wildest Big Ten rivalries. It all starts with big noon kickoff at 10 Eastern and then it's Michigan State, Michigan Saturday at noon Eastern on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Hey, maybe uh, Tom Brady will be watching the Wolverines as well. And after seven total touchdowns and no interceptions the past two weeks, Brady has officially entered the MVP discussion. The 43-year-old QB is now in the top five for MVP favorites after back-to-back -back wins and will look to improve his odds as he faces the Giants this weekend. Eric Dickerson, who, by the way, we haven't forgotten, has called Brady a, quote, <laughs> old-ass man several times on this show. He's still with us. Eric, how surprised are you at what Tom Brady is doing at 43? Well, you know, I got to say, the old ass man is proving me wrong. But, you know, he plays, <laughs> he plays a position of quarterback. And, and let's not forget, Tom Brady is a great quarterback, possibly the greatest quarterback to ever play. Um, you know, not having no OTAs, you know, not really knowing this offense very well, 
a new football team, a new city, new offense, everything. In the last three weeks, he has 15 touchdowns, one interception. I mean, he's playing fantastic. I mean, he's, he's throwing the ball as good or better than any quarterback right now in the National Football League. That touchdown he threw to Scotty Miller in, in the corner end zone was a it was a perfect throw. I mean, it had to be perfectly thrown, and he's throwing. It's like it's almost like he's playing seven on seven football when you watch him. I mean, this pass right here. I mean, it's like you, that that pass right is perfect. I mean, if not, he's out the end zone. So for Tom Brady, most definitely, you know, I think he's 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 playing like an MVP. And if you look at their schedule in December, I mean, they've got the Vikings, they've got the Falcons, they've got the Lions, and they've got the Falcons again in December. So. He's got some numbers he can probably put up because, you know, all those defense they're playing, they're very poor against the pass. But, you know, I think he's he's playing fantastic. And for a 43-year-old man, I'll say it again, <laughs> man, he, he, he's, he's playing great. As, and I'll say the position quarterback. He ain't going to be no running back at 43 years old, for sure. <laughs> he could be able to, maybe a kicker. He could be out of the Adam Vinatieri was, what, 46 yeah. last year? Yeah. So, um, he, come, he, Tom Brady is coming off the best game this season. But I think he threw the ball better Sunday than I've seen him throw in a year and a half, two years. Um, and he's had some bad moments. Uh, the pick sixes, forgetting that it was fourth down. But to bounce back with the way he threw the ball on Sunday, I was, I was very impressed. Now, did I think Tom Brady could play well? Yes, I thought he could play well, given what he had. I'm surprised that he's playing as well as he is so early. And I think the biggest thing is, I don't care what anybody says. This is not Bruce Arians' offense. They're letting Tom Brady do what Tom Brady does. A lot of shallow crosses, a lot of overs to, uh, uh, to Gronk, and we can see, Skip, we see Gronk starting to look like Gronk again. Yes. We see Scotty Miller running a lot of the routes that Amendola, Edelman ran. We see him accept the run. They didn't get down the field like this kid. This kid can get down the field. You know what? He's fly. I, I think he runs 4-3. Yeah, he, okay. he, he can run fast. I don't know yeah. if he's 4-3, he he did, but he can run fast. <laughs> and Brady was going to be in the conversation for MVP. Brady is one of these guys like LeBron and like Peyton Manning. Every year Peyton Manning is going to be in the MVP conversation, Skip, because he's going to have numbers and his teams are going to win. LeBron's going to be in the MVP conversation. Tom it was going to be in the MVP conversation because they were 9-7 and seven last year. So if they go, tw they win 12, they win the division, they get a first or second seed, he was going to have to be in the conversation because think about what they were last year. And now that he has an outstanding defense, I don't believe his defense are playing any better. They're playing fewer snaps. It's hard to play when your quarterback turns the football over hey, and you, you get the ball on the one-yard line. You want to talk about sudden change? <laughs> yeah. When you lead the league in turnovers? So Lord now all mercy. of a sudden, Skip, instead of playing 75, 80 snaps, they're playing 60 snaps, and the teams are having to drive the ball as opposed to getting the ball on the 10 because Jameis fumbled, because Jameis threw an interception. So Brady deservedly is in the MVP, MVP conversation. I got him behind Russ. I got Rodgers. And unfortunately, Skip, I got Mahomes in front of him. People mm. are not talking about Mahomes. But he's still having a, he's 16 touchdowns with one pick. Mm. Rodgers is 17 and two, and Russ is 22 and six. But he's definitely top five in the MVP conversation. I think Jenny said he's fourth, and deservedly so. Mm. Wait, with the same Aaron Rodgers who folded like my pocket square no, against it. Tom Brady. Whoa, 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 whoa. Folded <laughs> like my pocket square. Yo, guy got beat by Nick Foles. Mm. You did you see what Nick Foles just did on Sunday night? 20 to 19, he got beaten oh, by Nick Foles. Who's his? His kryptonite. I can't explain it. <laughs> Eli and Nick Foles. I don't I don't know. Back to my man E. D. He was doing great, eating him some old old ass man crow, and he was going right down the yellow brick road toward Tom Brady's greatness. And then he suddenly said, He's possibly the greatest quarterback ever. Possibly? Who who else would you suggest? <laughs> My, you know, I'm a Joe Montana man. I'm sorry. Oh. I'm just uh, see that San Francisco helmet. I don't like that he signed it for me. I'm not a 49er fan, but I'm a Joe Montana guy. Okay, that's fair enough. But, there we go. All right. So, Eric, think about this. The 43-year-old Tom Brady leads the whole league in what Pro Football Focus calls big-time throws. He's got 24. He also leads the league in fewest what they call turnover-worthy throws. So you combine big time plus fewest turnover-worthy, 
you, you got a team that's got a shot to win it all. Because Jameis, through this point last year, that team had 17 turnovers through seven games. Now they have seven. Uh, they're plus five in turnover differential. That, that's how you win championships. Absolutely. And you can see Tom Brady, after he threw that little fit on the sidelines in that game in question at Chicago, he, he went after, he roasted his offensive line on the sideline. All of a sudden, they're playing the cleanest football in the league. No, no turnovers the last two games. No sacks the last two games. He is now imposing his sort of New England Patriot way culture on Tampa, and they're starting to resemble the way the Patriots play. I do agree with that. I mean, you, that you do see some of Tom Brady putting some of his touch on, on that football team. I'm going to tell you, I think the I thing that's going to really help them is the sign of Antonio Brown. I mean, and I really believe that Tom Brady had a lot to do with that. Think so about when he was in New England. He was there. He had five catches for a touchdown in one game. And people say, oh, man, he won't be ready to play. I'm going to tell you something. He was one of the best. He's probably the best receiver in the National Football League when he left the NFL. Runs great routes, works out hard. Yep. I mean, first of all, you got Mike Evans. You got Chris Goodwin, who's hurt. You know, now you got Gronk, who's playing like Gronk again because he's getting comfortable. So this team would be very dangerous. I mean, I got, you know, you know I know you love Tom more than I love Tom. <laughs> Skip, for sure. But I, I think Tom... Is playing fantastic football. Do I think he's a great quarterback? No doubt. If not number one, number two. In your book, number one, it's, you know, I always say it's who you saw play. I played against Joe Montana. I didn't play defense, but I saw him play up close. So that's my guy. And and Tom Brady's your guy. But most definitely, he's playing MVP football right now. I was watching, um, Skip, what is that thing that, that show that um, Peyton Manning does? And he was breaking down yeah. Tom Brady. Detail. Details. Details. Yeah. And he says... I wonder what took him so long to allow Tom to run Tom plays. Yep. He says, you can tell this is Tom's yeah. offense. Yep. And all this other stuff, no risk it, no biscuit. We're going to just throw the ball. No, 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 you're not. <laughs> you go, because you got Ro, uh, uh, Ro Jones, who's fourth in the league in rushing. He didn't run, they didn't run the ball particularly well on Sunday, ED, but they ran it enough that when he put, that, put his hand in his belly and he rolled over and those linebackers stepped up, Gronk was right in there behind him. Scotty Miller was right in there behind him. Mike Evans was right in there behind him. And that's what Tom Brady likes to live. And then he catches you looking in the backfield, Lawson, and then he throws the ball over your head. Tom Brady is not a guy that plays for field goals. Tom Brady will catch you. Oh, okay. You, you think, oh, he ain't going to throw this ball. And next thing you know, he's launching the ball 55 air distance in the air, in the back pile on the end zone. And they got a touchdown right before the half. And then they get the ball coming out the second half. Yep. So I got to ask well, the to two Hall of Famers I'm talking to right now, is there any resentment on either of your parts that he is still going strong at 43 when your positions did not allow you to play into your 40s? <laughs> no? No, I no, want no. To no. Play. My, I position, want... My, 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 my position wouldn't allow that, for sure. I, mean, I know. No. I, mean, I got it. I want to play what I got running back. Edie, I wanted to play one more year. And had CBS not called me and offered me the same, basically the same money that I was going to make playing football, I would have played that year. But that was it. 15 was going to be it for me. So either I was going to be 15 and retired or I was going to be 15. I was going to be 15 on somebody's TV. But no, I, oh no. I, Skip, those licks oh. hurt, man. I mean, it got to the point. Hey, tell him again. I was sore. Tell him, I was sore until Saturday, uh, Friday and Saturday. No, I want to know more parts of that. You should have played quarterback. <laughs> no, I couldn't. I couldn't play those. No, hey, Skip, it wasn't like it is now. Hey, they yep. You couldn't play quarterback. Okay. No, you know, they, they wouldn't let you play quarterback like that. No. <laughs> Skip back then. No mercy. The Dodgers ended their 32-year title drought with a Game 6 win last night that included a shortened season and a playoff bubble. All this while L.A. was just coming off the high of LeBron, leading the Lakers to their 17th title in the Orlando bubble in just his second year with the team. So, Shannon, which championship run was more impressive to you, Lakers or Dodgers? Be honest. Honest. I mean, it's really hard to say either one because both of what you fought for didn't come to fruition. You fought to be the number one seed so you could have home field or, or home court, and you ended up having to play in a bubble, and then you end up having to play however far Arlington, Texas is from California as your home field. Mm -hmm. So for me, Skip, if you look at it, the Dodgers beat the number eight seed Brewers 2-0.
The Lakers beat the eight seed, the greatest eight seed ever, Portland. Mm. The Pod I'll, I'll give you that one. Okay. That's, that's even Steven. Okay. All right. The Dodgers beat the four seed, the Padres. We beat the four seed. Mm. Who is that, Skip? The Houston, uh, uh, the Houston Rockets with two MVPs, James Harden, who's revolutionized basketball. Wait, the Padres had the second best record in the National League, though. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, go ahead. You guys beat the Braves. 4-3. Mm -hmm. You the Braves was up 3-1. That was the two seed. We beat the Nuggets, which was the three seed, because the two seed that we should have been playing, gag. Mm. Okay, then they beat the Rays. We beat the, we beat the Heat. The Rays now... The Rays were the fourth, were the uh, fourth, the favorite, the fourth favorite mm -hmm. in preseason betting odds. The Dodgers were the favorite. So, Skip, I mean, both uh, it's, it's like which is heavier, a ton of bricks or a ton of fe feathers? Mm. You said they said the Lakers. We were going to be like the fifth or the sixth, the fourth or the fifth seed, the sixth seed in the West. We weren't even supposed to be here. Remember, it was Clippers, Clippers, Clippers because we weren't mentally tough. Remember you said that, Skip? Yep. Oh, the Nuggets going to be better. All these executives said, well, who's going to get to the Western Conference Finals? Who's going to get to the NBA Finals? Poor little Laker couldn't even get a vote. Mm. Nobody voted for us. And then they robbed us of the MVP. They robbed us of Defensive Player of the Year. They robbed us of Executive of the Year. Mm. They gave Executive of the Year to Lawrence Frank. Skip, you know we deserve that. And wait, he's with the, oh, the Clippers. Go Skip, ahead. We got AD. Y'all got Paul George. Mm. Even after Kawhi Leonard did a switcheroo on us, mm -hmm. we had to fight. We had, we had to put the piece of go. Okay, we got to get Danny he Green. Bamboozled you. And guess and guess what? And guess what? And guess guess what he got? Mm. Guess what he got? Guess what we got? Mm. It's equal skipping fifty fifty. It ain't no because what we what everybody fought for. They were 40, what, 40, 60 games. They were 43 and 17. They wanted home field, wanted to see Dodger fans see them celebrate. That didn't happen because of COVID. We fought to be, ha be able to have our home games at Staple. That didn't happen. So the mental aspect of it is that you're isolated from your family. You And you got to do this mentally. I keep telling you, Skip, the greatest key to survival mm. is not size. People think it's size and speed and strength. It's adaptability. Mm. You see, the alligator's been around for 60 million years because it's been able to adapt. Mm. We were able to win championships. We, Laker Nation, city of champions, city of angels, mm. because we could adapt. You couldn't. Mm. The Dodgers just proved to you they could adapt to any circumstance and situation because they scratched and clawed down one of the toughest roads to a championship you will ever see. Meanwhile, your Lakers cakewalked through a bubble owned by LeBron James. How? Cakewalk. How? Oh, let me ask you a question. How did he own the bubble? There was the same circumstances. Everybody else was in the same environment as the Dodgers. The Rays was quarantined, was isolated. The uh, uh, the Padres were isolated. The Braves were isolated. The Brewers were isolated. They got no benefit. Those were all soft bubbles because they weren't exactly keeping you in a confined space. You could go out at night. You could go away. You could see your loved ones. It was different. Well, that's what happened. That's why they had all these forfeits. Okay. That's that is exactly right. What did you get to do? LeBron got to take your team to the bubble because he smelled blood. He said, I got this. I can go back to my <laughs> AAU days, and I'm going to take my team. I'm going to lead my team, and I'm going to show them how long did it last, two months or whatever. Three months. Was. They were there well, 95 three days. Months. Yeah. We will suck it up, and we will embrace the bubble in ways that the Clippers, the team that would have beaten you if you had ever Well, met. now, since you told me that, that the Dodgers, that it was a soft bubble, the Lakers had to talk because there wasn't nothing soft about their bubble because guys got sent away when they did things. You remember uh, Danielle, uh, uh, House? Yeah, he, do guys I? Guys got sent away. So the Lakers had to tough it because they were in an actual bubble and they were actually quarantined and they had no positive test for 95 of the old days. Okay, and thank you for bringing up the Rockets because <laughs> in the second round, the divisional round in baseball, the Dodgers had to face the Padres, who, to use a baseball term, could rake. Yeah. They had the second best record in the National League, and they were formidable. Machado and Tease. Yes, you got it. And, and the Dodgers shut them down and shut them up. Yep. Three zip. Yes. And that was it. And then here came the Braves. Yes. Third best record in the National League. They led the National League in hits and in on base, and they were second in runs scored and second in home runs.
Uh, nuggets? I don't think so. Oh, yeah, the, the Braves game. were serious business, yeah. and the Dodgers were almost done. They, they were, were down three games to one, and it looked pretty hopeless, and here came the Dodgers scratching and clawing back into this. LeBron and company never faced the kind of adversity that, that the Dodgers faced against the Braves because the Braves were really good. They were 50-50 with Gil, the Dodgers. When, when, you, when you like us, Gil, you don't have to worry about adversity. When you got the old goat James yep. and you got the bride, you got baby goat, what yeah. adversity goes over our And guess who was waiting for you for the Dodgers in the World Series? The Rays yeah. with the second best record in all of baseball. They were a team from top to bottom. They were difficult to deal with. And wait a second. Did Blake Snell and... Um, a Rosarena, let's take those two. Did they get hurt in game one of the no. World Series? They did not. Mm -mm. What happened? Goran Dragic got hurt. He was their leading scorer of the Miami Heat in the finals, in the playoffs. He got hurt in game one and was gone. And bam, hurt his shoulder and was never the same after game one. We beat the brakes off. You remember we had a 20-point lead mm -hmm. when all those guys got hurt. Yes, we beat the brakes off you in game one. Yeah. With Bam and Drogic. You didn't have beat a 20, the you had a 40-point lead. Exactly. Yeah. With Bam and Drogic. <sighs> the Rays were serious business. It took a an inexplicably dumb decision by the manager, <laughs> Kevin Cash, last night in the sixth inning to give you the one break that you got, Dodgers, to get home in six games. It looked like it was headed for game seven. But think about what we had to do. We had to... We're a big team. We like to start JaVale. And then we get to the Rockets, and we got to start Marquise, we gotta, uh, uh, start Marquise Morris. And then we get to the finals, and we normally like to start. We were playing Dwight Howard because Dwight Howard is stepping to the starting lineup against, uh, against Jokic. So now we get there, and guess what we do? Say, so you know what? Frankie V, mm. the guy that didn't nobody want, he was the 15th option. Yep. And he says, you know what? Caruso, get in there. Mm. So the adjustments, see, that was a blood. Uh, the Dodgers won because they didn't win because of this. I believe they still would have won, probably taking them game seven, mm. because Kevin Cash made a boneheaded move. Yep. We had to make strategic moves mm. because that's what we do. Because mm. we want to play big. Okay, y'all got bigs. Okay, we play bigs. Y'all want to play medium? We'll play medium. Y'all want to play small? Mm. We'll play small. Mm. And considering that they weren't totally fully isolated, mm. that they still could go see their loved ones mm -hmm. and they could go and come as they please, what the Lakers? Mm. We were quarantined, Skip. We were 95 days. Had Somebody had to come. If you wanted a special kind of food, somebody had to come drop it off. Mm. Y'all get to go to the restaurant. Y'all got to go to Mastro. Y'all got to go to know about all these fancy places. We had none of that. The Rays were the Clippers, and the Dodgers beat the Rays in six. They beat the equivalent of the Clippers because what? they had to face the Rays. Well, what if, what if the Clippers had a gag? Because they beat the Astros. They had a big lead. Remember, they were up 3-1. Mm -hmm. Oh, they were, no, they were up 3-0. No, they were up 3 -oh. What if they had a gag? Mm -hmm. So what we were saying, they be, what we were saying, mm -hmm. if, 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 the, if the, uh, the Rays had a gag after being up 3-1, Skip, all you can do is beat who's in front of you. And because we beat who was in front of us, after being isolated, Skip, we were stranded yep. on that bubble island mm -hmm. for 95 days with nobody to come Advantage break. Advantage LeBron. Whoa, 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 whoa. Did you see what my friend Jared Dudley said last week on a podcast about the Clippers? He said those boys did not want to be in the bubble. They didn't want to go in the first place, and they didn't want to stay, yeah. and some of them didn't Skill. want to stay. Skill. Their hearts were not in it. Advantage Skill. LeBron. That's like me growing up. Mm. There were a lot of guys that were equally as talented as Shannon Sharp, mm. but them boys didn't want it like Shannon Sharp. How is that my fault? Mm. How is that LeBron fault that they didn't want it? You, walk. you told me that Kawhi was tough in the sideboard. And mm. the thing that everybody said to a person, the thing that separates the Clippers from the Lakers is mental toughness from the head coach down 1 through 15. And the very thing that you said was the very thing that made them weak. Mm. If you're not careful, you'll become the very thing you despise the most in a person. <laughs> yeah, right. Congratulations on your cakewalk. We and got Mookie. Congratulations to the Dodgers because they earned theirs. And guess what? And they're going to be there for a while. They're young. Yeah. Urus. Mm -hmm. Oh, Skip, did you see him throwing that? I told you. Urias. Yep. I told you, Skip. I said, hey, as long as that, look, 
Jansen, hey, I know you mean well, but we couldn't let you get the we couldn't mm. we couldn't get you the ball that night. No, nope. we could get. They made that mistake. Once. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Yep. we could we could get you the ball that night. I'm sorry, bro. And then we got Mookie. We got Mookie for Lamo Yale. You do. Now we ain't got Braun that long. We got <laughs> Braun for about another another three to five. But I see. Guess what, Skip? Did you see the the, uh, the odds? Guess who favored the winner again? The Dodgers. And, 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 and the NBA. Mm. <laughs> and the it, Clippers. No, 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 stop it. So we're going to have, guess what? 2020. So we're going to have a parade for four champs. Twice for the Lakers, twice for the Dodgers. So we're going to have a parade by 7 million people next year in 2021. Just a parade full of everyone. No mercy. Tomorrow, Matt Ryan and the Falcons need a win to get their season back on track as they take on NFC South rivals. Teddy Bridgewater, Bridgewater and the Panthers. It all starts at 7.30 Eastern on Fox, NFL Network, and streaming on Amazon Prime. Doug Bryan is one step closer to playing in his first NFL game since 2017. And yesterday, the Ravens signed the All-Pro receiver to their practice squad. Upon getting the opportunity, Dez tweeted, My emotions running high right now. I'm thankful. I can't stop crying. Followed by the laughing, crying emoji. So, Shannon, how do you feel about him signing with Baltimore's practice squad? Skip, I'm extremely happy for Dez. Um, it shows me that he really wants to play. Um, I think they had him in, and they said, look, we need you to be in a little better shape. And it looks like he went home, he worked, got in better shape, and they brought him back and says, hey, <clears throat> now, um, they could possibly, they could use Dez. They have the worst receiving core as far as production they do. with catches and yards and touchdowns and yep. things of that nature, mm -hmm. Skip. So maybe Dez is, is a person that could help them out immensely. And in order for them to go to ultimately where they need to be, Skip, they're going to have to throw the football. Yeah, we know they can run it. But what happens when you don't have the lead? And yep. you got to throw it. And we've seen over the last couple of years, Lamar Jackson gets to the playoffs, they fall behind, and he's unable to bring them back throwing the football. And so hopefully Dez, I don't know what Dez has left. You're asking an awful lot, Skip. A guy that hadn't played in a long period of time, who was never a burner to begin with, mm -hmm. suffers an Achilles injury. Yep. And so we don't know what we're going to get. This is uncharted territory. We haven't seen anything like this. Basically, He's Josh Gordon, but Josh Gordon was four to five years younger when he returned yep. than what Dez is currently. And Josh Gordon didn't have the injury that Dez. It was just, you know, we know Josh Gordon's story. So I'm happy for him, Skip, that he's willing to start at the bottom yep. and to work his way back and says, all I want was an opportunity. You got my foot in the door. Because remember, Skip, they tried to sign Dez immediately after he got released. And he said no. It turns down three years, $21 million yep. to come By back Baltimore, Baltimore yep. to come back and basically take a $12,000 a week job. Wow. I'm happy for it. Hopefully it works out. Ditto. When I read his tweet last night that ends with, I can't stop crying, it nearly brought a tear to my eye because this still young man, he's 31, mm -hmm. he has suffered. He, he went from the top of the mountain in 2014. He put up one of those years that, that you look back on and say, that was a year. Right. He dominated this league in 2014, led it in touchdown catches. Whew. First team all pro. And I'm on TV every day. I'm throwing up the X. Every Sunday. Right. You know, every I'm Monday morning, you coming in throwing up the X. And that year obviously ended in Green Bay, in which Dez caught it. They finally didn't catch one. J just for posterity, could we see it no! one more time? <laughs> yes! He caught it, oh. and he ran with it, and he slammed it on the goal line with his left hand like a running back would, and the ref on the spot raised his hands to say, touchdown, until it went to replay review. That's a touchdown. Upon further hey, review. Upon further review, it's not a catch, said somebody in New York, I guess. That's a touchdown. Caught it, ran with it, slammed it on the goal line. Complete control. It, it bobbled even as he hit the, the ground, and it came up on top of him, so it never touched the ground after he slammed it on the ground. This is as much of a catch as you will ever see. That's a catch. He ran two strides with it and had such control in his left hand because he's left-handed. He slammed it on the goal line. 
That's how I will remember Des Bryant because my team would have won that game and gone on to Seattle where they had won in the regular season, and they just might have beaten those Seahawks again and gotten to the Super Bowl. They would have run into Tom Brady. That would right, they caught score. a buzz also, no. Yeah, okay, I got that. But that was really the height of Des Bryant. And what was he best at? He had incredible all-time rapport with Tony mm -hmm. Romo. They loved each other because Tony liked to just throw it up for grabs. Yes. And the one guy who could go up and grab it the yes. most was this guy. Yep. Wasn't the fastest, but he was big and strong and powerful, and he could leap mm -hmm. and play basketball and high point you and beat your brains out. He did make the Pro Bowl in Dak's first year, so I give him that, but the numbers are about half of what he did in 2014. Correct. Jerry paid him after 2014, and he earned it. Yes. He got, what, five years, $70, 70 million. Dollars. Right. Whew. And then Jerry came to regret it because he began to fall apart. He had a Jones fracture. He had this and that and the other, and he had no chemistry at all with Dak, and they fell apart. And pretty, pretty soon he's out. And then he's out of the league, and to your point, he has an Achilles tear. And it did my heart good just, what was it, a couple months ago, we saw the video of him catching off-season passes in that workout facility mm -hmm. in Fort Worth from your homeboy. Yep. Because Patrick Mahomes still has high regard for what Des Bryant used to be, right. what, what he achieved in this mm -hmm. league. So, again, do I think he could contribute for the Ravens? Well, not much contribution there. They're right. 31st ranked in passing. Yeah, 189 yards a game, maybe yep. in the 50s, 60s, 70s, even early, early 90s. I mean, that was good enough. You had a sound running game, yep. you could play defense, but not in today's game. Yep. In today's game, Skip, you need a guy because it's going to come a time that this says, okay, we're not going to let you run the football, yep. and in order to beat us, you're going to have to throw yourself to a victory. Yeah. And right now, it, 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 what concerns me is that is Lamar going to advance enough because he's going to have to trust that he's going to put the ball up and Dez can come down with it. Yep, I agree. That's what it's going to come down to. It's all about trust. Yep, and mostly red zone trust. Yes, yes. Because yes. Dez can still do that. Right. Maybe some third down possession receptions. Right. But I'm rooting for him. I am too, And Skip. by the I'm... way, on December the 3rd, the Dallas Cowboys visit the Baltimore Ravens. So just for Dez's sake and our sake, because it'd be fun oh, to Oh, they're going to run for 400 yards on you. Yeah, yard. here we go. Y'all just gave, hold on, y'all just gave up 200, 200 plus yards to Washington. You gave up 300 yards to, to Cleveland. 307 rushing. Oh, y'all better give up 400 to the Ravens. So maybe they won't need Dez that night, right? Uh, Oh, what you call going to be the first quarterback to run for 200 yards, Lamar? Mm. Run for 200 yards on y'all. Yep, you could be right, and I can't even argue. <laughs> no mercy. Well, it has been seven years since LeBron. Foster. Terry says it still gets brought up all the time. Terry said that each time a kid recognizes him, they always ask him, why did LeBron dunk on you like that? So, Shannon, are you surprised that people are still bringing this up seven years later? No. <laughs> um, that's going to be for the rest of his career. Skip, Jason Terry had a very good career. He played 19 seasons. He's an NBA champ, made the seven most threes. But there are certain plays that will stick with you for the rest of your life, no matter what you accomplish. Skip, what is Chris Webber? Chris Webber had a very good NBA career. He's a very good on-TV analyst. What is he known for? He called a timeout they did not have. Okay, but that was an all-time blunder. Bill Buckner. Think about Jim Marshall. Skip, Jim Marshall played 20 years for the Vikes. He never missed a game as a defensive lineman in Minnesota. But what okay. is he known for? He scooped I, up a fumble ran and ran the wrong way. Okay. I, I got it. But was this a blunder by Jason Terry? He's six feet, two inches tall. <laughs> LeBron is six nine. He just happened to be in the way. The wrong, wrong place, wrong, wrong time. time. Yes. But didn't that happen in 2013? Yes. Okay, what happened in 2011? Skip. It, it, what, it, 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 there was this thing called the NBA Finals? It was, it was one. Let's see, Skip, that's a series. This is one play. Okay, do you realize what Jason Terry did to LeBron over those last three games when LeBron just melted yes. down in a way we'd never seen yes. a superstar melt? Games four, five, and six. He, this is a big three he made right in LeBron's grill. That was a big turning point three. Listen to what Jason Terry did. Sometimes guarded by LeBron, games four, five, and six. 17 points, 21 points, and led all scores in the closeout game six with 27 points. Yeah. I made the case. He could on, have been the MVP. On, I did. I made a case for him. I thought he was the MVP over Dirk. And yeah. I know Dirk was the, the sympathetic, you know, sort of romantic yeah. choice, you know. Okay, I got that. But this was Jason Terry at his greatest. Right. 
And so I, I think you can argue LeBron was getting even with him, but I think Jason Terry still has the big advantage over LeBron. Well, he does. He, he won the title, Skip. But there are certain plays that happen, Skip, and that's what you go. Skip, Bill Buckley had a very good career. He was a very good batter. I think he won the, I think he won oh, the batting title one year. I mean, I covered him out here in L.A. when he was a Dodger. He was really good. But he... You're not okay. living that down. Okay, I got it. But that was a mistake. <laughs> what what Jason Terry did was, it was not a mistake. A mistake. He should have he should have been there. He should have just moved out of the way. Hard to live it down. And we got it. It is a good we got day it back. to be a fan <laughs> in LA. Congratulations to all those Dodgers fans out there. That's all for Undisputed. We're back same City time of tomorrow. Champs, baby. That's what we are here.